What's up, everyone? Welcome to Game Face, episode 381 on Sifted Games at Sifted.net. I'm Shane Satterfield, and I'm still alive. I have survived the ravages of COVID for a second time. In fact, recovered in kind of record time, to be honest, Matt. Um, I, uh, it was an interesting road, to say the least, with COVID this time. So I've now had it twice. Um, the first time I had it, I got it with my wife. And so it wasn't a big deal. Like, we just hung out together and waited for both of us to get better. This time I was alone, so I actually had to quarantine and sit in a room for, like, five or six days or whatever. <laughs> that was pretty rough. Um, one thing I will say about it is, so the first time I got COVID, I was all vaxxed up and had all my boosters and everything. And it was like nothing. Like, I literally felt a little off for a day. And then my nose ran for a couple of days. And I just waited to test negative. This time, Matt, I... Haven't had a booster or anything for like well over a year, maybe even like a year and a half at this point. You know, like a lot of people, you just kind of relax. You know, people, you mm -hmm. know, don't have it anymore. You're not seeing stories about it. You're like, oh, I'd need something crazy to happen probably for me to get it again. And it turns out the crazy was our building, the elevator went down three weeks ago. And they still have not repaired the elevator. So everybody has to now take the stairs up and down in our building. And it's just there's no ventilation in there. And I think I just caught COVID because people were just constantly walking up and down the stairs. Yeah, that seems seems possible. That seems like the most likely scenario on how I got it. I'm not 100% sure, obviously. But I, I guess thinking on Friday because I was at a birthday thing on Friday night. And I was like, if I get COVID... I will have no idea where it came from because mm -hmm. I've been too many places yeah. this week. Yeah, I knew where, I kind of knew where it came from because I hadn't been a lot of places before I got it. So I get, look, what, what I'm about to say is anecdotal. This is just me and my experience that I just had. But I will say this, in two months time, when my natural immunity has worn off, I am getting a booster. Because for my personal experience, when I didn't have a booster, COVID sucked. When I did have a booster, I cruised right through it. Again, could be totally anecdotal. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do going forward. Um, so anyway, uh, the crazy part about it too, Matt, is I got it way worse this time, but mm -hmm. managed to test negative far more quickly this time than the first time where I got it. Like I was fine after a day and then it took me like a week and a half to test negative. Mm -hmm. This time had it really bad test negative after like five or six days of getting it. So it's COVID is crazy, people, if you haven't figured it out yet. I was telling Matt before we started recording today that I feel like COVID is like a virus that we could have got if we went and like drilled into an asteroid and took like the plug out of the asteroid and brought it back to Earth and an outbreak happened. That's COVID, man. Like there was one point where I was laying on a bed still and I was looking at my arms and there was pain in my arms. I'm just, there's nothing touching my arm. There's just pain on my arm. And it's because COVID attacks your nerves. It is just, it is crazy. I'm so glad I feel better. Thank you guys for all the well wishes and everything. Sorry that we missed Game Face last week, but the timing actually worked out pretty damn well because I got it like the day before we were about to do Game Face, which gave me the perfect amount of time to get better and test negative so we could do it this week. So ultimately it kind of worked out. Um, you know, I I don't know if you guys have all had it or you've had it multiple times. I don't know if it was easier for you the first time or worse. It really seems like there's no pattern to it, Matt. Like, mm -hmm. it just seems completely random. Yeah, it's, a, it's a weird disease. It sure it is. It works different every time. Yep, and as you can see, we have some new partners with us here today. Mm -hmm. Matt, you want to introduce the uh, the noobs to Game Face? Yeah, this is um, dog sitting for my friend while she's out of town. This is, this is Luna. So, still another Luna. Luna 2. Luna, Cat Luna is uh, locked in the guest room, and then the black one is Strider. Uh, they are horrible terrier terrors, <laughs> and uh, you will they will bark and you will hear them. Uh, I guarantee they bark at every single dog that passes by the house. <laughs> Been well, a long week. Well, the, the, um, our normal co-host Luna can't be here because no, of this new this, Luna, right? This, this one sometimes attacks cats, so I don't I don't let the cats out yeah. while they're here. Um, but Luna's happy in the guest room. I go see her several times a day. Uh, she will get her house back t uh, later tonight. Oh, um, but yeah, these guys have been um, been here for a while now. Been huh? A while. Uh, just I've, I've watched them before, but this this time they've been. Rascals. I think they're comfortable or something now. Oh. Like they're, they're, they, they've made themselves at home. They are. They keep coming back. Like 
I came back from a movie on Sunday and they'd taken all the cheese wrappers out of the trash and just <laughs> scatter them across everywhere. And then like they come back with weird things from outside. They try to eat weeds. They, I, I, they're eating things off the floor and there's nothing on the floor. I'm like, what are you eating? And they're like, my whole job is to keep these idiots alive. Pretty much, and that's I, it. That's and your I, whole job. And I keep, like, I, I just don't feel like we're on the same page yeah. on that. <laughs> Uh, like I've, I've, my Steam account says I've played Dragon's Dogma for like 30, 32 hours. I have no idea how long I've actually played it because most of that time has been pausing it to see what the hell is happening, <laughs> why they're being loud, why they're not like when it's quiet, like why, why are they quiet? Like yeah. what's going on? You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of checking on the kids. Yep. I uh, grew up with a dog, and so as a young lad, I loved dogs. Mm-hmm. Growing up with a dog is kind of awesome when you're a kid. Now I have no interest in owning a dog. At no, all. I mean I like dogs. Obviously, I, I don't I, hate them. I have no interest in having right. one regularly. Like, they smell. Is, they're loud. Yeah. They destroy crap. This like cats enough. are. Cats are so much better. Mm. It's not even close, honestly. <laughs> they're so, Ow, so much lower. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> and they're fucking jealous. They're <laughs> they, so oh, jealous. Yeah. Like anything. Uh huh. If you pay any attention to the one mm-hmm. dog, the other dog's gonna be pissed off. They're brother and sister. Oh, they are. They are siblings. So, uh, so, yeah. There you yeah. go. So anyway, we have some new co-hosts along for the ride. They won't be here next week, right? They're leaving soon? Yeah, they're leaving tonight. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who knows what the way flights work these days. That's true, but. actually. Well, let's check in with you guys before we get going into our housekeeping. Again, I want to thank you guys a ton. One, just for being patient with, you know, no episode last week. Um, I realize that that sucks if you're one of our patrons. Um, But none of you guys were like, hey, when's it going to happen again? In fact, I saw some stuff in the chat before we started today that said you guys thought we're surprised we're doing the show today. So um, I just want to say that I appreciate you guys giving me some grace here to get through COVID. And luckily, I got through it pretty quickly. Um, Wow, look at all this stuff you guys have going on in here. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. So many. uh, Trich Prime. I'm going to go through them all. Commander Fett, thank you. P291, thank you. Uh, Don Lionheart, no Rise of the Ronin. We are not covering Rise of the Ronin today. I'll just let you know that right now. We just, this show is packed. We do, we already have too many games for today's show. Uh, so that game was pushed to next week. We have another game that was pushed to next week, uh, which is good. We're going to have awesome shows here on Game Face for the foreseeable future. But yeah, no Rise of the Ronin today. It'll be in next week's show. Um, user-friendly .exe, thank you for uh, for the well wishes. I do feel very, very a lot better. <laughs> Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Garrett Cartman is, is Russell Wilson the answer? No, he's not. <laughs> um, AJ the Legend Watson, thank you for Twitch Prime. Surly Mexican, thank you for Twitch Prime. What's up, Pharaoh Doll? Hope you're doing good. Cinetike, thank you for all the tier one subs to our community. That's awesome. Anybody who showed up to watch the show live. Shane is Wolverine. You got that damn right. Uh, Cinetike, Shane is alive. Yep, I survived. I actually don't feel that bad. I, I, again, it feels like the disease or the virus was worse when I had it, and the recovery was way better. It, mm. it makes no sense to me. Um, Pharaoh Doll says tons of people have it. There's all kinds of stories about outbreaks. I, I got it. So definitely some people have it out there. Not Cirque. Thank you for Twitch Prime. Rafael Michael. Hola, Chico. Shane looking great. Good to see you're well. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Although I, don't, I still feel like I'm looking a little haggard today, but definitely better than I did like four or five days ago. Uh, Toast9, thank you. Um, Eric Carmenis, I'm definitely not getting old. No. <laughs> Fire Native, thank you for Twitch Prime. You're not that much older than when you had it before. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I had it like a year and a half ago. It hasn't been that long. Uh, Raphael Michael says, quite the zoo Matt's got there. Well, he's got yeah. the two cats quarantined, yeah, so. Yeah, two cats are in their rooms. So, it's, <laughs> so it's, I, I, every, every morning and every evening, there's, I have to make the rounds. Go see, mm-hmm. go see Luna, go give pills to Rampage, go feed them, go... Let them out. Go back and yeah, it's just. Uh, yep. Uh, I, I can't. I can't believe I got anything played <laughs> at all. Like, um, imagine if you had a kid. <laughs> I'd rather not. I mean, yeah. I, yep. watching other, dealing with other people's kids and dealing with other people's dogs uh, makes me feel like I have made the right choices in not having either of those things. Well, one thing house. I will say, all my friends who have kids, you know, we're getting to the age we have to start thinking about retirement and all that kind of stuff. They're all like scrambling and like freaking out because kids are crazy expensive. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, their kids are already in college or about to go to college or whatever. And they're like broke. <laughs> and they're like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to retire in like 15 years or whatever. Am I going to be able to do it? Like kids are really really expensive for sure 
Uh, one Super Master Gamer, thank you. 56 months you have subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you, man, or girl. That is freaking awesome. I appreciate it. What else we got here? Uh, Luke the Gamer, one. Subscribed at Tier 1. Thank you, man. That's awesome. We appreciate it. Uh, Pharaoh says, I look normal. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the mod retro modern game right COVID this winter when flying. That's how I got it the first time, flying back from Greece. Uh, my wife and I both got it on the plane flying back from Europe last time I had a vacation. Um, Luke the Gamer, you know me as you gamers from the UK. I totally remember you, man. Holy moly. <laughs> I realize everybody else may not remember this guy. I do. He was one of our biggest community members at Game Trailers back in the day. I absolutely remember you. Thank you for your support through all these years. Like, that is amazing. I'm glad you found us. We're here every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Please come back, man. I totally remember you. <laughs> Obi Wan 9000, I intend to sell my son. <laughs> to retire? <laughs> <laughs> Wait till they get old enough so that they have enough value. They've learned some things so mm -hmm. that they actually have some value on the trade market. Right. <laughs> Oh, man, we shouldn't be joking about that. But that's funny, Obi-Wan, 9,000. Um, Fire Nato says 1,000%. Best choice I made. No kids, and I love it. <laughs> AJ the Legend says, yep, three grown daughters. Like, mm. if you have kids, man, you know, like, you're probably struggling right now, hoping you can save a bunch of money before you're ready to retire. They're expensive AF. Uh, Contano, thank you for Twitch Prime. You guys are just delivering today. Oh, there's Luke saying, yep, yeah. It's awesome. It's really awesome when people manage to find me again. Like, I've talked about it many times, Matt. Like, the biggest problem that we had launching Sifted was that I was gone for so long. Mm -hmm. Being gone for, like, two years is, like, eternity on the internet. And it's crazy. Like, Luke was one of our biggest supporters, and he's just now finding us. I mean, it actually, it's kind of encouraging to know that there's still a lot of audience out there that is yet to find Sifted and what we're doing here. So... Good to reconnect, Luke, man. Again, we're here all the time. See you at sifted.net, man. Come on over. I know you're a hardcore gamer just like the rest of us, and it is a paradise for a hardcore gamer. So come on over to sifted.net and join our community. You will be uh, accepted with open arms. Let's see. I think that's that's it for all the BS. Yep, me getting COVID. That was pretty mm -hmm. much the whole story from the week. Uh, and luckily, I did not give it to anybody else as well, which is always yeah. a big thing. Um, like, I did reach out to people I was in contact with right before I got sick, and luckily, nobody else got it. So that's a big... Whew. So anyway, with that, let's get on with our housekeeping. Not house even keep. your wife? What do you say? Not even your wife. Nope, she didn't get it either. Nope. Like, and the crazy part was, I woke up um, in the morning and I had it. I had slept with her that whole night, and she did not get it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. <laughs> which is good. Um, so anyway, let's get on with the housekeeping. As I said, we have a huge episode today, tons of reviews, lots of big stories for housekeeping as well. The first one we're going to tackle is something that I'm really curious to get Matt's take on. Um, the biggest debut easily of this week is a new game called Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. It is a game by Skydance Media under control of Amy Hennig from Naughty Dog fame, Matt. Which we knew about. Yeah, we knew it was coming, but we got a first yeah. real look at it. There was a teaser trailer before. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we really saw it. And by the way, before we start showing this... Well, we still didn't see gameplay. This is all in-game. It's all it's all in-engine, but this isn't the game. Like, I don't feel is like we've it seen it. Is it or no. is it? Oh, I mean, what, you, I just you think, think that like, it may you, just not be that interactive. Oh, you think it's like a Walking Dead thing? Yeah, like a story-driven thing, yeah. Mm, I, Amy, Amy makes action games, though. I mean... Like, I, don't, I would be surprised... That's going to be a backlash to end all backlashes. If you it think so? If it, if it turns were just out... like a narrative-driven game that they can get out every three years instead of waiting every yes. seven? That's yeah? not going to go over well. People want to fight. People want to fight with Black Panther and, and Captain America. I can understand that, but again, the, the trade-off there is that you don't have to wait six or seven years to get a new game. And if people just enjoy the stories inside you know, with these characters and these settings... Have they, have they said that's what it is? No. They just I, said that I this is be, all an engine. I will be... Lord, if that's what <laughs> they have not is. said that. They, no. This will be a backlash like you've never seen. Yeah. If that's what this turns yeah. out to be, because people are expecting this to be a traversal based open like ag action game. Oh, it's definitely not going to be like an open world action game. I mean, I think it'll be like a level based game. I think it's going to be like room by room game. I mean, I expect it to be like kind area of like by melee area type. I, mean, thing. I expect it to be melee Uncharted basically. Really? Yeah. I would be surprised if it's that robust because this game also hasn't been in development that long. Right, but remember, like, 
she's the she is a veteran and everyone working with her is a veteran and now they don't have to deal with a fucking frostbite anymore. it's true i mean it is like, an all-star team the support of the unreal stuff like it doesn't really like shock me that they would have gotten i mean they, she's been working on this for years already three years yeah. i think it has been something like that i mean you're talking about probably like, they say next year let's see probably slips to 2026 probably um, it looks almost <laughs> photorealistic at times. Like these in in engine visuals look incredible. Oh like, yeah, it's just it's it's a real boring choice of setting and yeah. I mean it's just not like I don't care. Why about do you how, think they chose this? I don't know. Yeah, maybe because Captain America can use a gun in World War Two. Yeah, so they can do like a more shootery un- uncharted kind of gameplay thing. stuff. That's my guess. Um, so like then Black Panther can be more of the melee fighter and Captain America can be like a, a ranged fighter. Cause he, he can also throw a shield, shield and, and yeah. Um, like it's, and I get it. Like you want to do something that involves like, you know, Captain America is probably still one of the most popular characters from the previous saga. And so is Black Panther. They're both gone from the movies because Chris Evans, you know, retired basically from yeah. the character and Chadwick Boseman died. Um, which has really thrown a wrench into the uh, really ongoing has. MCU thing because I think they were going to pin a lot of the f- Phase Four on him, and rightfully so. Yeah, cause he was he was like the if if he was still around and Black Panther, you know, one of the big main characters of the Avengers from the first saga, was still around, sort of anchoring all this alongside like Doctor the Strange, and Captain Marvel, yeah. and Spider Man. Like, yeah, that'd be a totally different world. Yeah, it would. Um, yep. So this is his grandfather. Um, it used to be that his father was the one who knew Captain America in World War II, but that was when the comics were being published in like 1970. Now, is that the um, guy from The Walking Dead that plays Black Panther in this? I don't remember. Who, I don't know who's... Who the guy in The Walking Dead that had the, the lion or the tiger pet? Mm-hmm. He was know. like the head of one of the one of the twenty different like Maybe. establishments I, I didn't that recognize any of the voices in this. Okay. Um, and I didn't look him up. He, his voice, he doesn't look that familiar, but the voice sounds really familiar to he me. He does sound familiar. But he sound, they both AJ sound the familiar. Legend says, yes, that's him. Is that him? Yeah. Okay. okay. What's his name? I don't remember. But AJ knows. King Ezekiel, King Ezekiel. was his name in the show. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I remember that character. but Yeah, I don't remember what his, um, his real name is, so to speak. But he's a pretty good actor. He played that role no, pretty well the, in the show. Like, no issues with the cast or anything. It's just like, A... It's you know you're out you're out of the Marvel universe proper so you're sort of you know that's probably part of it too is like you don't have to worry about you know dealing with all that shit mm-hmm. um, but it's just sort of like okay like and like Hydra is not a very interesting villain to me no I agree um, more interesting than AIM in the Avengers game <laughs> but like you know it's you're not gonna run into and because it's 1943 the worst you're gonna run into is you know I don't know the Red Skull right like a super soldier I mean my guess thing. is he's one of the big baddies I yeah. would expect so I mean he's he's leading Hydra at the time um I don't know are it, you excited for it not really yeah it doesn't seem like you are um, I thought you really would I thought you would be at least a little bit no I mean I, I just I'm just not interested in this time period yeah I'm not, I mean I am in World War II but this is Marvel World War yeah. Two, and I don't. It's care a little about different. That. Yeah. If they were doing like the original, um, the the original, uh, 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 not Avengers, but the, you know, the, the, there's a period where they were, they had like the the original Human Torch and Namor and Cap, mm-hmm. and they were all teaming up, and you could bring Black Panther into that, and kind of yeah, like, yeah, that would be cool. But it just feels a little, it feels a little small. The to Human me. Torch really has just disappeared. Well, the Fantastic Four not being in Marvel's license lineup, yeah. and like, I mean, the Human Torch does appear in um, the first Captain America movie. Yeah, uh, in the little tube because the, the original Human Torch is an android. Oh, I didn't know that yeah. actually. The original Human Torch is from the '40s and is an android that can catch himself on fire. Mm-hmm. And if you watch Captain America One, when they when he and Bucky go to the World's Fair, there's a shot of this guy in a red like a humanoid android in a red shirt that catches fire in a tube and that's the original human torch wow the human torch in the fantastic four is the second human torch Um, i never knew that yeah interesting so i learned something every episode of game i can't remember what the the name of nightwing says you mean captain america and the howling commandos no i don't Uh, the howling commandos are a bunch of human like world war ii soldiers that fight with him they were in the original captain america one uh, Dum Dum and and all those guys. I mean uh, the Invaders. That's what it was. Pharaoh oh. knew. They're called the Invaders. Uh, there was a super. It was a superhero team. World War Two era. Namor, Human Torch, his kid Torch sidekick, Captain America, Bucky, and um, uh, maybe that was it. That was the them. And then, uh, but Black Panther could have been. He wasn't created yet. But these mm-hmm. guys were in the forties. They were the guys who were fighting the Nazis in the 
40s era comics. Yeah. Uh, before Marvel was Marvel, they were they were still uh, timely comics or Atlas at the time. I think my biggest issue with that trailer is where are the Nazis? <laughs> Yeah, well, Hydra's your stand-in. <laughs> get it, um, but, but it's like... You don't want to put actual swastikas. It always in. feels good to punch a Nazi in the face. So. Yeah, well, Hydra are that. <laughs> yeah, um, in a roundabout One of my way. other issues with Hydra is there's sort of this thing where like they kind of make Hydra sort of the secret, you know, sort of the way the, the, the mystical stuff works in Indiana Jones, where it's like Hydra are the ones who are like kind of, you know, working behind the scenes and the Nazis to like do all the weird mystical stuff and the weird super science stuff and all that. And like, mm-hmm. it to me, it kind of like... There's a weird. It's not intended, I don't think, but there's a weird implication of like, oh, the Hy- Hydra was the bad part of the Nazis. The Nazis were just sort of <laughs> mean. You know, it was just like, no, they were all horrible, and it was all terrible, and we do not need a the Nazis but worse yeah. kind of side. Character. No, I agree with that. Yeah, it, it's just, it, uh, I know they don't want that imagery in their movie, but it's just yeah. like, or their game or whatever. But it's mm-hmm. just like it feels a little cheap a little yeah. um i can kind of understand why they did it but and there's a sort of i don't know there's a certain there's a certain atmosphere right now in the world that i feel like trivializing nazis is probably enemy isn't, isn't a good really idea. really what we need to do right now yeah, here, here. i could uh, i could go ahead and just fight i don't know a bunch of dumbass super criminals or something yeah I, i'm looking looking real good for a game where you fight the records how about that <laughs> The idiots who found Asgardian magical items and decided to use it to do a bunch of bank robbing. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. As of right now, it's supposed to come out next year. They didn't give like even a window of next year. Uh, coming to PC, PS5, and Xbox series. And that's pretty much all we've got right now. There was a teaser trailer, and then this trailer, which actually shows in engine yeah. stuff at least. I mean, it's really more to show off Unreal 5. whatever, 5.2 or something mm-hmm. like that. Because it was at the at Epics thing, the yeah. Unreal conference. So, yeah. I mean, it is very impressive. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. For an engine stuff, man, sure. that's really amazing. Uh, see, again, it would just blow, it would blow my little eight-year-old mind to see video games now. Mm-hmm. It's really amazing how far they've come. Uh, but I also feel like maybe with all the layoffs, it's like, that might be contributing to part oh, of the issues is. with, the, with the industry right now. Mm-hmm. So it's a catch-22 a little bit. So so anyway, again, that's supposed to come out in 2025. I agree with you, Matt. Probably 2026 is more likely. We'll see. Um, but as of right now, it's supposed to come out next year. Uh, next up, we have conflicting stories on Xbox hardware. So I'm sure you guys, if you're on Sifted, you definitely know this. Like, a, There's been a lot of chatter. I was a little surprised at how much fast and furious like back and forth was happening with this during gdc because i'm like who who cares about xbox hardware anymore a lot like, of people do yeah. I, I mean from a business perspective but the whole problem is that nobody actually buys it so right. it's weird that everyone's so worked up over what the hardware it's like you know what the hardware's going to be on the shelf That's yeah i mean are the be. only people that are angry are the people who bought it already i don't know like- i don't <laughs> I mean, I hear you. I totally understand what you're trying to say. But there were mixed signals coming from GDC Game Developers Conference in San Francisco this week. Um, On one hand, we have Polygon, who scored an interview with Phil Spencer. And they ended up breaking it up into two parts. Second part's live on Sifted right now if you want to check it out after the show's over. Um, But his the, the interview, the first part of the interview, they talked to him about handhelds. They start talking to him about, hey, like... Steam Deck's doing great. Rogue Ally's doing pretty great. Like, have you thought about creating a handheld Xbox? And, you know, normally I would be like, ah, nobody, that's never going to happen. But he was like, hold on a minute. Yeah, I have been thinking about making a handheld Xbox. He says he has an Asus Rogue Ally and he loves it. And he said his only big concern that's really remaining for them to make it happen is to make sure that everything is copacetic. Meaning, if you save something on the Xbox handheld, when you go to play on your Xbox console, the save is there. You can continue the game and pick it up where you left off on the handheld. It sounds like they don't have that angle of it ironed out yet, but it also sounds like this is something that he's very Which interested in. Which is weird, because that's one of the things that the Xbox cloud thing does very well, like automatically, you know, jumping yeah. back and forth between my console and my PC on Starfield. And snagging seamless. that save from the cloud, yeah. yeah. It, I agree. But that's what he brought up over, like, several times in the interview, was like, well, we want to make sure that the ecosystem in there is there, everything's working the way people expect it to, but it kind of sounds like if they get that figured out, like they are realistically looking at making an Xbox sure, handheld. Why not, why not another loss leader? Yeah, Let's go I ahead mean, and do that. Does to this yourself. sound like a good idea to you? No. No. Wait, why? Why would? 
I mean, obviously, I'm not into the handheld thing anyway, but mm-hmm. isn't the appeal of the Steam Deck stuff, that it, the versatility of it? Yeah. And not being trapped in one ecosystem, really? You know, I mean, obviously, you're trapped in the Steam ecosystem, but the Steam People ecosystem want to be is in that so ecosystem. broad <laughs> that it might as well be everything yeah. you could imagine. And, like, the Xbox ecosystem is simply not that. I agree. Yeah. Um, but it does. So he, so he has the door open there. On creating an Xbox handheld, then and like what kind of like to compete or to be in the same space as the Steam Deck? Like you're talking about something that would cost more than the Series X. Yeah, yeah. It's just a weird direction. I don't understand it. And then on top of it all, late last night, early this morning, depending on your perspective, Games Industry released a podcast where they talked about all they they didn't name names, which is a little uh, I don't know running stuff like this without. Sharing your sources, okay, I can deal with it a little bit as long as you're not doing it consistently. But basically what they said is that from hanging out, drinking with developers, and just the overall GDC scene, Mm. which is, that's a lot of what it is, let's be honest. People are drunk and they talk. Right. And they said that the vibe that they got from talking to tons of developers at the Game Developers Conference was that Xbox hardware is in deep shit. Mm -hmm. That... Retailers in Europe not already started taking away a lot of the games and aren't selling all the games. Yeah. They're now considering getting rid of Xbox in Europe altogether. I mean, the, the if there's one thing I learned over the years of doing this, it's um, the things I heard from drunk developers in bars at GDC always turned out to be more accurate than the thing we were told in the interview at yeah. GDC. Yeah, it really did. Um so I think there's some validity to this. Yeah, I would think <laughs> like so. Like a lot of validity. Like if you've been at GDC, you know how it is. There's this, it's hard to explain unless you've been there, but you get there the first day, everyone does their business stuff. That night, mm-hmm. everybody goes out and drinks together for the first time. And as you said, it's your one chance really all year to hang around with drunk video game developers. Yeah, you want to know the inside scoop from the level designer of some whatever game? Yeah, yeah you're going you're gonna to find some shit. I found Oh, they'll sit I there and talk to you for hours. I found some crazy shit uh, oh, yeah. out. At some at the at the W in oh, San yeah. Francisco, I walked like, out of bars yeah. there and I'm like, I can't believe they just said that to me. Yeah. And then sometimes I'd get an email two hours like, late. Hey, maybe saying, don't. Hey, maybe don't the share end. that on invisible walls or whatever. Like, yeah. So they will follow. And I up generally sometimes. don't. Most of the time, I get information like you know, I'm not. Yeah, you know, I've never been a. Uh, a, a scoop breaker, scoop breaking reporter. <laughs> I've been a, a TV producer, you know. I'm yeah. like, and usually I use and a, and a reviewer, but I usually would use my information on that to like more inform myself and how I approached reviews or how I approached you know conversations on podcasts like this or whatever. Yep. Like you that's know, what I use. That's I'm not I, Patrick Klepek, but I'm gonna use the hello. <laughs> Patrick Klepek would have a dog that fit on its lap, for instance. <laughs> I do the same thing. Information that I get, I very rarely ever break it as like news because it's not worth it. Instead, I use it to form my opinions over the coming period of time, knowing I have that little nugget of information in the back of my mind. I may not tell you that that stuff is forming my opinions, but it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how I operate as well. I never saw the value in breaking news because what happens, Matt, in today's social media age, you get nothing for it. No. You get no action as far as getting people to your website. Nobody has a website. They just find out about it from whatever Twitter account. Yeah, they just they Twitter find out on Twitter. And so you get nothing out of it. Or and then the publishers or the developers pissed off. Like it's a mm-hmm. lose, lose. So I, if I get scoops, I just keep them. I don't. Sh- I hate to say it. I don't share them with you guys because mm-hmm. there's no value in it. Oh, I know so, stuff that would curl your fucking hair. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Uh, we all, so anyway. Um, that's. I, some, kind of, I mean, sometimes I've, I, I'll hint at things. Like, you I mean I? I knew Suicide Squad was a thing for a very long time. Yeah. For a very very long mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And even when people would be like, rrr, 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 I'm like, no, it's. it's I, <laughs> I promise. I don't. I don't yeah. draw a hard line in the sand too often about things like that. But no, it, I knew. Sometimes long, even long just ago. sharing that you know. People can connect the dots. You connect and figure out who told you that. But I, you, That's that, why I don't say anything. Usually if I do something like that, it's because more than one or th- three people have told me. Fair enough. Like that, that, yep. So I'm like, if you trace, it's like, okay, everybody's talking about this. So yeah. I, they couldn't trace it back to one person. Yeah. Um, or it was from like some weird sort. You know, it's like, Pactor does that sometimes too. It's like, I got told that by a guy who packs meat in a crate over mm-hmm. here that happened to get the wrong box and it had this in it. You yeah. Know, it's like, okay, well that's, you're probably not going to trace that back to anybody. <laughs> no, right? Definitely not. Um, so anyway, it does look like Xbox is in deep crap, Matt. What's going to happen? 
I mean, I think they're going to continue to, to shift into a software-only model. So what happens if they do get wiped out in Europe? And Europe's like, nope, not selling it at retail anymore. Does that matter that much if your business model is Game Pass? Probably not. not. I mean, it means you're kind of stuck. I mean, that explains why they're working so hard to get Game Pass on PlayStation. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, your only presence with Game Pass over there is going to be on pcs and that's just not a big enough market well they have to license stuff through ubisoft in europe because Mm -hmm. the europe european commission was playing hardball with them so they're like okay well we'll let ubisoft have the rights to this and then we'll have and the funny part is playstation can actually bid with xbox for the rights for that it could conceivably outbid xbox and get the rights to that stuff from ubisoft Mm -hmm. whether that happens or not probably not because there's more value for Microsoft to have that than PlayStation, but if PlayStation was feeling a little, a little salty, yeah, I don't think PlayStation has the money for that. It do- no. doesn't, and I don't think PlayStation Japan would ever put up the money for something like that. Ever, no. PlayStation Japan would be like, "You're what? Yeah. Europe? Europe? <laughs> That's a thing?" Well, like, I mean, PlayStation does very well in Europe. Oh, it does. It pretty much dominates. But Europe. like, you're talking about mostly sports at that point. No, you're right. Mostly FIFA, EA Sports FC now. Yeah. So anyway, um, and those again are like so much of PlayStation's brand is just things that people associate with PlayStation because they played them on Play, not because yeah. they are PlayStation. No, you're right. Yeah, like Call of Duty. Yeah, Final um, Fantasy. Yeah, let's be honest. Although to be fair, they've for they, a long time Grand Theft Auto Seven. They they brought that back to PlayStation only for the for a time being anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sixteen. GTA. Rebirth and, and Rebirth all exclusive. Yeah. yeah. And GTA still is thought of as a PlayStation game. I yep, think. for sure. Um, so. This, But stuff like this has an effect outside of the borders of Europe. Because if you're an American mm-hmm. and you're hearing that like European retailers may discontinue Xbox and not sell it anymore, I mean, it, if you're smart, you should listen to that and be like, hmm, maybe it's not such a good idea for me to buy an Xbox here in America either. I mean, it's probably fine right now, but I think it would. I think you should definitely take that information into account when it comes time to buy your next gen system yeah. in a few years. Yeah, which. Will Xbox release another Xbox? It says it will. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. But like, maybe the handheld will replace it, uh, for that matter. Actually. Um, you know, more of a... more of an, uh, That's kind of interesting. If they have a Switch instead of, like, a console. Yeah, if it's just, like, the Game Pass deck. Mm-hmm. It's possible. So anyway, lots of crazy stuff going on right now. Um, the Big Smoke 82 says, I canceled my Game Pass sub and sold my Series X in November. Uh, there's just no games I want, PS5 only, for the single-player exclusives, and now they're gone. <laughs> left with my switch i mean let's be honest like yeah. right now nintendo's kind of the only one killing it really it's a, it's a weird time <laughs> it really is we're in some alternate there's a, universe there's adult, those are doldrums here from the i mean it's from the delays from 2022 to 2023 and then the fact that no. 2023 stuff didn't get delayed for the most part and like basically we got two years worth of games in one year yeah and nobody who normally would be ready to start putting new stuff out is ready because they weren't able to shift their their work their workflow in 2021 2022 so yeah there's going to be a period of like but like that doesn't seem to have happened to nintendo hardware sales down 30 percent year over year in february now we'll see what nintendo's second half of the year looks like especially now that the switch 2 is because it looks dicey too run off to the next i mean we know the first six months were okay after that yeah. We don't really know anything, so I think I think we may be seeing the most er- first half of the year releases in the game of the year candidate nominees uh, in a long <laughs> like time. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So anyway, that's what's going on with Xbox right now. Um, if somebody came up to me and said, "Hey, Shane, should I buy an Xbox?" I mean, I, that wouldn't really change what I'd tell them much. I would tell I'd, them what's happening, but I think right now it wouldn't convince me to tell them not to get one. Well, I wouldn't be telling them to get one anyway. Yeah. So I'd be like, I mean, if people ask me, should I buy a PS5 or an Xbox yeah. Series X? I tell them to buy a PS5. Because yeah. PlayStation has the most stuff you can't play on the Xbox that yeah. you'd want to play. Yeah. I mean, maybe that'll change once Xbox starts rolling out its exclusives. Possible. But they really do seem to be dedicated to putting those on PC and maybe other platforms later anyway. So I don't know. Yep. Like it's, uh, it's a strange time for the Xbox. It is. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to a lot of stuff they got in the pipeline, but I'm also going to be playing those on my computer, yeah. not my Xbox. No, you're right. So. Well, on the flip side, we did get a little bit of good news from the Xbox camp this week, kind of in passing. It was the anniversary of the Elder Scrolls yesterday, and Microsoft 30 just, years. Yeah, just decided to mention in passing that um, right now people are playing the Elder Scrolls Six. They, it is playable. They have a playable build of the game, which is 
way further along than I thought the game was going to be right now. Um, I mean, technically, that Wolverine thing that leaked is a playable build, too. Yeah. I think, that thing's five years yeah, out. Yeah, look, I'm not saying that, um, you know, this game is coming into... Yeah, don't get your pre-orders yeah, in today. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a... I'm just saying, it's further along than I thought. I mean, I would expect that them there's to a have build. something playable, especially if they're build, probably building it off of Starfield and, and Skyrim Special Edition. I would imagine they have something they can run around in and do that with. I saw. I thought this wasn't coming until 2027, 20, 2028. Now the, the I think there's was... a slight hope for 2026. Oh, not a chance. Really? 2028. Really? Think sure. it's that far 100%, still? 100%. 100%. It's kind of crazy that they'd mention the something like that. The game's playable. It's not anywhere near feature complete. Or yeah. Like, they haven't built the world. You can just run. I'm sure it's like some of those early pre-alpha things I played where you just run around and hit things. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's a, especially a game like this, like, and the expectations of what it needs to be. And in the wake of things like Elden Ring and Dragon's Dogma, and um, there's another one. I mean, whatever GTA Six does, like there's like there's going to be some adjustment on the fly. I think for a lot of open world games, including this one, as soon as we see what Rockstar's come up with, um, if they've come, I, mean, I don't know. Rockstar, yeah, does, Rockstar even... doesn't always innovate on that yeah. front. You know, yeah. the, the f- four and five's. World I mean, look are... at Red Dead Two. Did it innovate in a lot of ways? Not in the terms of open world stuff, no. I wouldn't say. I mean, yeah. I, th- I think it, just get, it was more of what was already right. there in one. Yeah, yeah. And that's certainly cool, and that's basically all Elder Scrolls needs to do when you think about it. And let's hope that it, maybe it doesn't try to do more than that. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, I mean, if you try to do more, I, that's when it goes I, to, I, to hell. I would love one day for the combat in the Elder Scrolls games to be... Passable. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. I think Skyrim's was passable. Yeah. Um, it's because, especially, go back and play Oblivion. Oh, I know. That's un- almost Oblivion. unplayable. Yeah. Obli- Oblivion I mean, it was, was, Skyrim was improved. Skyrim it still worked. wasn't great. Skyrim <laughs> was fine. Yeah. Um, but I think they should be more than fine. Yeah. I, um, uh, for this franchise, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one time I remember one of my friends who, who worked on a lot of combat systems uh, at various places places, and had um, he was thinking about making a mod for Skyrim because he's a huge Dark Souls fan. Mm-hmm. He was thinking about making a mod for Skyrim that made the combat like Dark Souls. Yeah. And I mentioned that to Todd and he was like, does he want a job? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll tell him. And like, and it really came down to... even he knows. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I well, mean, to be fair, the combat in Starfield vastly improved over Skyrim. Oh, yeah. I mean, but it is mostly projectile well, I, based. I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to compare it to Skyrim because it's not melee, but That's it is saying. certainly yeah. vastly improved compared to Fallout 4. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, they finally nailed you know, ranged combat. Basically. Yeah. So I'm sure the bows will feel, feel great. <laughs> and the magic um, casting. Yeah. yeah. The, the, ma- they've, the magic's they've made, always been They've decent. made progress with magic every time. Skyrim was the first time a magic only character was really viable mm-hmm. because they got rid of this stupid mana bar. Right, right. And you could just, you just were recharging basically. Yeah. I love that. That was great. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, it just, I, I and I know, well, look, you, you mod Skyrim up enough, you can basically play it like Dark Souls now. Yeah. Like, like there's, there is combat mods that make it feel pretty Pretty close to a, you know, a melee action game, or at least like a fable. Kind That's of thing. encouraging. Um, you can do but it. Those are those are I fans, mean, right? But you can do it. And the thing <laughs> yeah. is, Bethesda knows that. Uh-huh. They know you can do that. Yeah, yeah. So the 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 stakes are high. Yeah. So you're thinking not till 2028 still. 2027 or eight. Yeah. yeah. I I can't see it. I mean, there's so much to do. I wonder if there's... they're going to keep updating us every year on this big anniversary. There's no, nothing wrong. I mean, weird little anniversary dates and weird things like that have become like tradition. Milestones from a for PR that stuff. Thing. Yeah, you know, like and Mario, Seven Day, we get Mario something day for Mass Seven Effect day. every time. Dragon Age Day, which might be the weakest choice of because <laughs> it's because it's, it's uh, was it twelve four? Is that right? D A. Oh yeah, December fourth. D A. <laughs> Dragon on. Age Day. Go away. Like, come <laughs> Breach, that's i breach. mean that's very fitting for the for the the game series that takes place in thetis yeah which stands for the dragon age setting because yeah. they never came up with a better name for it but um the red the retro modern gamer says phil spencer wants epic game store and others on xbox consoles to grow the console market yeah his yeah, so the second part of the interview today with polygon he basically talks about how the market is flat mm-hmm. like completely flat like the industry isn't growing anymore and he's like, so how do you grow it again? Like, right. And obviously his answer to that is Game Pass. Um, we'll see if that ever happens. But anyway, um, that is the second part of the interview. That, again, it's up on Sifted right now if you want to check it out. Um, something fun that was mentioned by an insider who's been right about pretty much everything that they've predicted thus far. Um, it's an account called Dusk Golem. They, he, she, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, um, 
shared yesterday that Resident Evil 9 is going to be an open world game. Mm. What do you think about that? I don't know. Like, I... I mean, I, you got to do something, I guess. Do you <laughs> like, think you have to? Yeah. I mean, I I am perfectly willing to give an open world Resident Evil a shot. I've walked through corridors and weird houses for 25 years. And yeah. If you want to do something different with it, sure. Um, we know that the Resident Evil engine can do it because we just... We are playing it right we're now. We're playing it right now. Yeah. Um sure i don't know i don't care i, I <laughs> you don't care about resident evil not really really no interesting I, mean, I, I certainly like four and i thought the remake of two was great but re like most of that series is a is a dead fish to me most hmm. of the, i mean i it was of the time obviously yeah. you know the older ones but i i don't know i don't care about horror games for the most part yeah you really don't yeah um and i resident evil is just mostly stupid to me like it's just so <laughs> dumb um, like it's impossible to take seriously as a horror thing. It's kind of a bad game about half the time. Um, and when it's not, it's great, but it's more of an action thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, Resident Evil 4 was awesome and the remake of Resident Evil 4 is awesome. Um, so if you make Resident Evil 4, but with a big open city full of zombies, yeah, maybe. I mean, but, I feel like Village and the RE4 remake are already kind of... They're flirting with it. They're yeah. creeping in that direction Eight already. They're certainly messing around with that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so um, I don't think it's that far-fetched to think that the next one might be that way. Oh. And as you pointed out, Dragon's Dogma 2 is built on the RE engine. So Ow, already... What are you doing? <laughs> the jealousy. <laughs> so already they've proven that that engine can work with an open world Stop. design. Um, I just wonder... That, I think the thing about Resident Evil that makes me wonder if it will work with an open world is how each area is kind of curated and enemies are placed in very specific points. I mean, it's the same thing I kind of wondered about from Software's games, how they would work in the open world because, you know, they're bastards and they hide mm -hmm. enemies around the corners. Well, as it turns out, they're like, okay, we'll still have that in our game. We'll make it a cave or these little yeah. smaller environments inside the bigger environment. That could work. So if you have a Resident Evil game where it's a big city or whatever, but you still have a mansion and you still have a hospital and these big buildings that you still need to go and infiltrate and do the Resident Evil thing, then I think it could work. Um, but I don't think that just like every action franchise should just become an open world game. Like I don't feel like it's just like the natural order of things that, oh... We have an action game that was, you know, this linear thing in the last generation, and now it needs to be open world. I don't think that that's the case. Like, you know, well, I think in this case, it's just we've been a linear thing for a quarter of a century, yeah. and we're going to try something different because the engine can do it. Yeah. Um, I just hope they go Resident Evil Four more than Resident Evil Eight. Yeah. Because I'd rather play a third person game in that case. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's all. I mean, I don't know. Like, Resident Evil is not some kind of like holy rip scripture or like some kind of like untouchable thing to me like fuck around i don't care like resident evil 6 didn't ruin anything for me i don't care if chris redfield punch punches a boulder into rubble like yeah i mean it's ridiculous anyway like go ahead and have fun with it yeah um at least, you know, and i i feel like they've kind of dragged as much as they can out of the first person sort of tangent they went on for seven and eight and uh i guess try something new again while you're still remaking other stuff i mean I would imagine there's a remake of one in the pipeline. There's a remake of zero probably yeah. in the pipeline. Um, or Code Veronica. Code Veronica desperately needs, needs an update. It bad, yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, put put like the the new experimental stuff with the the new number along out alongside like kind of the remakes of the classics. It's been working so far. The other thing to keep in mind too is that Resident Evil Nine will finish off the Ethan trilogy. I thought they already. I thought eight already did that. No, that was only the second one with Ethan. Right, but I thought that was kind of the end of him. No. No. No, there's still some story left to tell there. We don't really need to tell that. <laughs> I don't think. I, that's why I brought it up. I know a lot of people haven't really had an affinity for Ethan as a character. There's nothing wrong um, with him. It's just not interesting, and they yeah. sort of, they've like weirdly hovered around the, the other characters tangentially for years and it's mm -hmm. just like i don't know just let me play as fucking chris or jill again like, yeah I, who cares like i don't give it like tell ethan's story as a side quest or something i don't care i don't want to play as ethan anymore well the thing that you said earlier about how maybe i'll play as ethan in third person i know they did they added that in eight so it's mm -hmm. fine but like i don't know that those other than the the tall step on me mommy vampire woman i don't i didn't think much of interest came out of eight 
Lady Damask, whatever. People yeah. seem to love her. Oh, everybody um, loved her. But yeah. Like, and it makes me wonder what the hell they're going to lean into in the next one. Yeah, because um, you kill her. <laughs> she's dead. yeah. You can't bring her. I mean, well, I mean, she's a vampire. You can come, anybody can come back. I mean, how many times uh, have you? How many times right. have you killed Wesker? <laughs> That's a good point, actually. I mean, to your point earlier about how you know you don't view Resident Evil as a sacred cow. I'll be honest with you, Matt. I don't really look at any franchises that way anymore. That is one thing that has changed for me as someone who has been hardcore into games for like 30, 40 years and been a journalist in the industry for twenty plus years, like. I don't look at any franchise as like this shining thing on the mm. hill that nobody should touch anymore. I used to. I have a couple anymore. of those, but they're things that like no one else cares about but me. Most of my fears have been waylaid. Like a lot of the big franchises where I was like, no, don't do that. That's going to ruin it. Like as it turns out, it didn't ruin it. Like, yeah, well, a lot of times it now, does. I still don't like the new ver- form of Zelda. Right. But... I was going to say a lot of times it does ruin it for me. Yeah. But it doesn't ruin it at the marketplace, you know, right. in, you know yeah. in, in the in the box office. So yeah, I mean, speak. ultimately, they've done the right yeah, thing. It's not like yeah. Zelda's going away forever because the changes made them bomb. They were yeah. bigger than ever. I just didn't like them as much. Yeah, me too. Um, so, yeah, you know, and the other stuff I have is like, you know, Jet Set Radio. I think Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is one of the worst things I played last year. Yeah. In part because they don't understand the tone or the presentation. People disagree with us on that game. Oh, big I know. Time. But they're wrong. Well, we agree um, with each other on that yeah, game. But... I, I thought playing that game was a miserable experience. Not because I... the gameplay. The gameplay is fine. Like, it is an updated, better gameplay version of what Jet Set Radio did 20 years ago. Yeah, better be. Of course, yeah. it better be. But, like, it's a thoroughly unpleasant game. It lost me. the spirit of the And the original. music sucks. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, nothing, it doesn't touch the music in those the Jet Set yeah. games. Like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. it's not even close. Yeah. And I, I'm also skeptical of the new Jet Set Radio game they're making. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm doesn't doesn't only sit on Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. I'm saying, like, I don't know if anyone can make another one of those. Yeah. Properly. Let's see what you guys are saying about Resident Evil. Obviously, one but of again, the biggest franchises. I can't imagine anything lower stakes in the game industry than making a bad Jet Set Radio game, right? Yeah. No one cares. I'm the only one who cares. Um, let's see if you guys are saying anything about Resident Evil. Um, Silk Snake says, no, he was in the DLC and his daughter has powers too. Ethan's daughter, yeah. So the big DLC, if you remember, she had kind of taken over the mantle. Yeah, Ethan's daughter finishes the story. That's what I thought. Yeah, that was the DLC was all about Ethan's daughter. Yeah, so they yeah. Don't, you don't need to do another game about Ethan. Yeah. We're done. Maybe, well, maybe it's still play... him. I mean, it's his daughter. It's the Ethan trilogy, right. so to speak. Well, are you going to play as her? In the yeah, I think so, yeah. All okay. right. Was um, she magic? What did you say? Is she magic or something? She has special mm-hmm. abilities, yeah. Um, David five eight zero seven. Did you, you make a horse time. jump up a cliff? Because that's required now in open world <laughs> games. <laughs> From Elden Ring. Um, let's see. Vincent says the question is when will we see it? Early twenty twenty five would make sense. That's also when Monster Hunter Wild should be coming out. Yeah, I mean if you look at the cadence of the Resident Evil games, we are due for one next year. Yeah. Um, whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know because they squeeze the RE four remake in there and like, I don't know exactly how they're going to make that happen but it's typically we would get a new resident evil next year yeah so, i mean i get, hey, I get up, the buddy? impression there are different teams doing the new ones and the remakes mm-hmm. so i mean i would imagine we'll get whatever the next remake is it's probably two years away yeah maybe a year and a half that'd be my guess probably um, code veronica also code guess. veronica would make sense but they really they do really need to do the first one to like complete the the, the remake tr- the, the, re- the one through four yeah. sort of Set, yeah, the original what do you call that not a trilogy it's a, a, quadri- quadri- it's a quadrilogy quadrilogy or or a tetralogy depending okay. on which language you want to go with <laughs> okay um so anyway that's the latest on the new resident evil next up we got i think what some bad news this week some people may not feel that way but i do we are not getting a sequel to baldur's gate 3 larian is mm. like no well here's the thing yes we are larian's just not gonna make it oh, okay right i guarantee you there will be a Baldur's oh Gate yeah 4. oh yeah for sure but Larian's not going to yeah. be the ones making the game. I think this is smart. I think on whose part, Larian? I mean, no one else gets to make this decision, right? Yeah. Um, well, they, I mean, Wizards of the Coast could have. They wouldn't. Though. They'd be dumb. They're like, please they make, make, hired make us, another. Please make us another of the most high-profile <laughs> thing we have ever had in the history of this IP. Yeah. No, uh, the Larian is more than capable of making their own thing, and I'm I'm sure a a development process of something this complicated in which you do not have to answer to Hasbro is going to be a better experience. Yeah. Um, Because they're a nightmare. I understand why Larian did it. Yeah. Because he wants to work with a partner if you don't have to. Right. And although I wouldn't argue with somebody kind of going up, sidling up to him and being like, hey, 
uh, I got the Kotor license right here. Mm-hmm. If you would, if you would like to take a look at that, but I, I mean, think, imagine all the suitors that Larry oh, yeah. is going to have but now I that think, they know they're not going to make another Baldur's. Game. I think it's much smarter for them to to move on to their own thing. You know, they, they can write their own ticket now, so do it. Um, I'm. A little I just. Su- it was so nice, Matt, to have a great Dungeons and Dragons game. Oh yeah, like, well, we have it now. Yeah, it's, it's never going anywhere. One, we, you haven't another... finished that game. <laughs> what did you say? You haven't finished it. I mean, I've spent forty some hours on it. Right, but you're, it's still there for you. Yeah, it's still there. I'm a little surprised they're not going to do any DLC. But it was interesting to hear him say basically like n- nobody's heart was in it. Yeah, like, and I'm sure integrating DLC into that thing would have been a nightmare if you didn't plan it all along. Yeah, yeah, or maybe even standalone stuff or whatever. But like, mm, like I, I definitely support them going on and, and doing their own thing. Like, I do hope they do their own thing that's a separate thing and not like Divinity Original Sin three. Which would probably that, be my guess of what they're going to do. Yeah, but I don't think that's really ver- a very compelling. But you know, that's what world. they want to do, though. They want to take the audience that they built with Baldur's right, Gate three, and put it on their own stuff, and then send them over to their own IP. Where I, they make all the money. I would say, do something new. I would. I, I me too. Yeah. I mean, I've already played Divinity Original yeah. Sin. Like, like Original Sin two is about as good as that's going to get. Yeah. Um, take your lessons from both of those games. Make something brand new. Um, you know. With the story and story narrative threading qualities of Baldur's Gate three and an actual good combat system this time, because Dungeons and Dragons only takes you so far. It's kind of a mediocre game in terms of the the war gaming aspect of it. Yeah, uh, partly intentionally. It's it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a, a more casual storytelling thing, especially in its modern iteration. But like, no, do I, I think a good idea on this on, for them? I mean, obviously, maybe not so good for Hasbro. It's going to get um, dirty with Baldur's Gate 4. Oh, yeah. I wonder who, who who's going to be dumb enough to take that on. Because it's, people are going to get pissed. They're going to be like, wait a minute. Like, this isn't the same studio. And there's going to be this, like, messaging mm-hmm. thing. It's going to get messy. There's just and- there's no way whoever is unfortunate enough to tackle Baldur's Gate 4 is going to turn out something on the level of Baldur's Gate 3. It's so, pretty much impossible. Um Good luck. It's, it's, it's a un, it's a unique <laughs> three was a unique confluence of a bunch of different factors, including who Larian is right. and what they've and the done. And the games it had already made. Yeah, yeah. And you're just never going to be able to duplicate that. Yeah. In part, just because you're not going to get seven years to make it and two years of early access to fine tune it. Like that. I mean, it's crazy that Larian had the money to be able to withstand. Well, they that. didn't have the money. Hasbro had the money. Yeah, they, they were they were getting. I'm still surprised that Hasbro would buck up that much cash. Hasbro. I mean, I don't think Hasbro would now. Mm-hmm. But Hasbro really was trying to capitalize on the D and D boom, and I think now they've sort of realized that there isn't one yeah. to be <laughs> it was exploited. Just a, another COVID thing. It is, yeah. No, it's a boom. It's still happening, but yeah. like no one's interested in paying Hasbro for right. it. You know, yeah. like everyone thinks all the modules and everything should be free or mm-hmm. fan made or whatever. And you know, they're not wrong in a, in a number of ways. Like m- fan made stuff. The the basis of the baseline of the system is sort of what people use and build on. That's why for a while. Uh, Hasbro was trying to set up that thing where you'd have to pay them every time you played D and D in any kind of like probably it's like all right, they were trying to like <laughs> do licensing fees on like the you know like D, you know uh, Dimension Twenty and Critical Role and those things and uh, pay, like they'd have to pay royalties for using even though they never really mentioned you don't really use D and D they don't use the proper names of anything they just are using the D twenty system yeah um, and that uh, again that was backlash on a level that you rarely see like they they fundamentally misunderstood the executives. The, the idiots with MBAs who stepped in and did not understand the product they were trying to sell and decided, oh, we should do this. Uh, much like the uh, when uh, Glassdoor, the, the, the... Oh, and all their... They merged <laughs> with this other like job-seeking site that they also acquired, and they just merged the data. So all of a sudden, your Glassdoor, which is an anonymous, like, reviewing your old employer's site... Uh, got merged with your data for looking for a new job site, and if you knew enough, you got access to that account, you could see everybody's info. Yeah, and it's like, so what, now they know what dumb fuck with an MBA was just like, we should merge all our data sets because that's how smart business works, <laughs> but without understanding what the fuck you were selling. Uh, that's a huge mistake. If you're selling peaches, don't turn around and try to tell everybody they're apples. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Um, so anyway, this and- is the problem with hiring people out uh, that have like business degrees or whatever things, marketing degrees, PR stuff, who have never worked in the field that they're pre- representing. Yeah, that's why the studios and the movies were different when the people who ran the studios were the most successful producers of the previous generation. No, you're right. Because they knew how to make a movie, yeah. and they knew what people were doing and what they were going through and why they were going through it on those sets. 
and now you've just got a bunch of people who got nepotized in by their dad knowing somebody. It's an algorithm now, yeah, pretty much. Or just had enough money to to throw at something until they, you know, created a studio out of sheer force of monetary will, which is how Skydance exists, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, yeah. Skydance is, makes pretty good stuff, yeah. but they're an exception, not the they're an exception that proves the rule, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good and point. we'll see how their first game turns out. Yeah. So anyway, to Matt's point, there will be a Baldur's Gate 4. It's just yeah. not going to come from Larian, and we can say with probably about 99% positivity that it's not going to be as good. Yeah, that would be a very pleasant surprise it if, it was, <laughs> if it was better than, than 3. Don't um, count on hard it. To, I mean, I, even with someone who has the misgivings for 3, I didn't love 3, Yeah. but I recognize the genius in it, Yeah. and I just don't see any other company pulling that design off. Having that pixie dust. Yep. Uh, next up, we talked, I think it was three weeks ago, we were, like, wondering what's going on with Sony Bend. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they're up there. They work oh, I'm on... always wondering what's going on with Sony Bend <laughs> every day. <laughs> well, they uh, they finished Days Gone, and then we heard that maybe one of their other projects was canceled. They did not give the green light to Days Gone 2 this week. Probably wise. Yeah, probably wise. Um, this week we find out that the reason we haven't heard anything is because Sony Bend is working on a live service game. So, wah, wah, wah. yes, Sony Bend has Days fallen. Gone Line, coming soon. That's actually a pretty good title. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think that's what it's going to be? No, I'm sure it's some other stupid shooter bullshit. Do you think it'd be smart? I think it might be smarter to make a Days Gone live service I think game. A day, I think a game where you're running, yeah, yeah, you're running around kind of take out these hordes like multiplayer and a set traps for them. It's like there's something there uh -huh. for sure. So maybe like they were working on Days Gone too, and they sort of like decided to adapt it more into like a division sort of thing. I could see that. Because don't forget, like the big hook for the gameplay in this game, as Matt just alluded to, were these zombie herds. Yeah. That came after you. They were like the thing that they eventually featured. came after you. All right. It's it bizarre to me that they they didn't induce that <laughs> introduce that mechanic for like twenty hours. It is weird. Yeah. It's Which like was you, what they hung their hat on. Yeah, that was the big demo. And I'm just like, <laughs> when am I gonna do that? Like I'm yeah. passing by. I have to like basically run by these guys for like half the game, and then I'll say, oh, here's how you do it. Okay. Yeah. So they have that tech, and you're right. It is perfect for a live service game. It's just you basically, if it's you herding and managing like huge herds of zombies, yeah. like. Everybody, you know, the, you know, for clans or biker gangs. And right. I mean, it's like, it's all kind of there. Yeah. It's, I mean, maybe that's what this the game should have been. Well, yeah. Well, the only <laughs> issue is that it's like, it wasn't very popular. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a reason I why. think I also think there's a risk of like, I think like people are just tired of zombies. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm tired of zombies. Yeah. Like there's that new uh, Walking Dead show. We talked about it twice now on today's show, which is crazy. But there's that new one where they bring back Rick and Michonne or whatever. And like the reviews for it have been great. They're like, Wow. Walking Dead, back in form. Finally, the show has found itself again. I haven't even watched a single episode because uh, I'm just I, I don't care even know anymore. It was on. Yeah, I don't even care anymore. Like, I mean, I checked out of Walking Dead after se in season two. Yeah, a lot of people did, and I stuck with it for a long. When they time spent a whole day that. trying to get, whole, whole episode trying to get that zombie out of the well on the yeah. farm, <laughs> yeah, and they're right. like, "Don't already break, poison the well. Don't break the thing." It's like, no, it's it, there's it's, a corpse in the water. <laughs> you cannot drink that water anymore. I don't know how else to tell you that. Like, but if we pull the hand off, no. then, then we can't drink it. <laughs> it's funny. Um, I also have burnout on zombies, and I have, have a feeling a lot of other people feel that way as well. I mean, yeah. at the very least, you got to do something really interesting and unique with it. Um, or, at least, I mean, even, I mean, I guess the horde thing might be um, like it felt like uh, what's it called? Dead Island Two did okay in the sense it of did just, very well, just actually. in the sense of how just violently graphic, yeah. it, like the, the zombie killing was. Like that was yeah. different, I guess. Um, I haven't thought of that game in a long time. Um, I hadn't thought of Days Gone for a long time yeah. <laughs> until now. <laughs> but it's just sort of like, you know, they do disappear. You know, like, like when was the last time you thought about Dying Light 2? I mean, yeah. obviously they had that big update a, a few weeks ago, but I didn't even, I, I forgot about it. I actually did go back and play. I've gone back and played They just played made a Dying huge Light update where apparently like improved a bunch of stuff and changed yeah. a bunch of things. And I have like, gone back and played like They're kind of calling it a 2.0 almost. Yeah. But like, I do kind of want to go back and see because I did like the game. I yeah. just felt like it wasn't fully baked. Yeah. Um, I have gone back and played that since we talked about it here on Game Face. Um, my biggest issue with Days Gone is that like everybody in the game is unlikable. Yeah, I don't like the main protagonist. All the antagonists, like I've struggled to really. 
I don't know. I just never resonated with any of the characters in the no, game. I mean, I I desperately wanted like some like choices because I wanted to just let Boozer die. Yeah. I was like, I don't <laughs> yeah. need this. I don't want to save him. Like yeah. he's so worried about this <laughs> asshole. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't care what yeah, happens. To I felt Boozer. the same way. And you got me running back and forth between these two places trying to like get the antibiotics from. So like, I don't give a shit. All if right, I, let him if die. If I take long enough, will I fail this quest? Because I'd love to not have to deal with that guy again for the rest of the game. Yeah. And then, I mean, he's not even... And also, like, so, I mean, I think it's intentional, but, like, he is crazy. The Which main, one? Your character. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, he's, like, when he talks to himself, and not the talking to yourself's great, but, but he's like, oh, you you lost it a long mm-hmm. time ago. Yeah. And, like, I'm sure that's intentional, but it doesn't really... It alienates you from him, I think. I mean, I'll be honest with you, Matt. All pop culture does not accurately portray stuff like this. Like, if you were seriously living through crap like this, you, you would psychotically break. Mm-hmm. Like, you would be a mess. You wouldn't be able to talk. You would be just a disaster. Like, the fact that people can, like, reason and, like, it's insane. Oh, yeah. And, like, if this stuff really you, happened. I mean, you would, humans are humans, so we would form little groups and stuff. But, like, when those groups met each other, it would be like chimpanzees going to war. Like, yeah. Like, I, I don't think it would be They've even. Never, e- I don't think it would be even as civilized as what you see in, in I, these yeah, things. I agree. Yeah, so anyway. Although I guess it depends on the type of zombie. Like, I, I, I do believe that if like a Resident Evil zombie style out, like a slow zombie thing happened, we would be able to deal with that. Oh, you mean we'd like um, survive and everything? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you'd be able to contain that. I'm well just saying enough. mentally, these I don't guys, think like, human like, beings would be able to e- deal with it and accept well, what's Well, we already happening. saw that in the pandemic. Right. A whole bunch of them didn't. Right. That's a good point. So... We'll see what Ben's working on. But I these guys, like, fast-moving, infected, like, 28 days later. So I think well, we'd all die. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it would be insane. Not a chance. So anyway, Ben is working on something. I kind of hope it is. I don't want to ride related. with Boozer to Crazy Willies. Leave me alone, <laughs> game. Like, like, just that quest title makes me want to turn it off. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's a beautiful setting, though. Yeah. Uh, I love... I love uh, Pacific Northwest. Rural, rural Oregon. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's nice that they destroyed their own area. Of, right. <laughs> like, the, the, like, Sony Ben's like, what What, what if, you know, down the street? You yeah. Know, like, <laughs> Downtown. We want to set it in Portland? No, fuck that. Like, right there. <laughs> set it at Crazy Willies, man. Like, uh, so anyway, we should, maybe we'll learn more about that in the not-too-distant future, but it does sound like Sony Ben has been swept up in PlayStation's push towards live service games. Next up, uh, we were just talking earlier about how there are certain franchises that we've just accepted that are PlayStation franchises. Um, We talked about how Grand Theft Auto used to be that way. We talked about a big franchise that just recently has really been that way with Final Fantasy. Um, But here's the thing. Final Fantasy 16 did not sell as well as Square Enix hoped that it would. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think it sold as well as as it deserved to sell. Neither is Rebirth. Uh, How do we know that? Uh, it was the, the sales to date charts from Japan, although it didn't include uh, digital. Uh-huh. But it was like Rebirth is like half of Remix. So Whoa! Far. I didn't see that. Now again, that might be because digital has taken over. In so the much. U.S., it was on sale for one day in February. It was leap year, the 29th, and mm-hmm. it was still second mm-hmm. on MPD. So I it's mean, done it, at least pretty well here. Yeah, although that may be more an indicator of how much did not come out in February. That could be as well. Um, but. It seems to have sold okay in America, at least. I think it's selling okay by the metrics of things selling right now. Yeah. But, like, it's all down yeah, anyway. Yeah, no, you're right. So. Well, Final Fantasy 16. And also, like, my, to hear people talk about the Final Fantasy 7 stuff, you'd think it was the biggest game in the world, and it simply is not. Yeah. We knew that, though. We said that before the game it's came not, out. It's not, you know, oh, yeah. But it's just not pulling in new people. Yeah. It's pulling in some people that played Remake 1. And not all of and them. And not all of them. Yeah. Although it's a easily a far better game. Like, you should play it. I think tons of people are just waiting for price drops. That could be. They just don't have a reason to jump in at launch. Yeah. Well, Final Fantasy XVI is an excellent action RPG. Matt I and I both would, really like it. Oh, I would put this head and shoulders above Final Fantasy VII Remake. And um, the game did not sell as well as it should have. And so, Square Enix, it had an event this week, and it announced some stuff for Final Fantasy XIV and things like that. But it also shared in an interview off the cuff that Final Fantasy 16 is coming to mm-hmm. new platforms. Yeah, which we kind of knew. I mean, well, we could have guessed. Stop. <clears throat> Here's the thing, though. Why are the dog's claws sharper than the cat's? I don't know. What the hell is that? <laughs> Good luck trying to clip those too. Um, I'm doing that. <clears throat> um, and so he says new platforms, but what other? There's no, no. There's one platform. Well, PC. 
Well, it's already. Well, I think they already announced it's coming to PC. Yeah. So they're saying in addition to PlayStation and and PC is coming to new platforms, and there's only one because it's not well, coming to Switch. I mean, you could cloud it on Switch. I guess you could cloud it. That's something Square Enix has done so far on Switch, but you could. Um, they could go the Ubisoft route. But let's just be honest, it's coming to Xbox Series X. Mm -hmm. Um, I do wonder what type of a money hat Sony gave Square Enix, and if it ended up being worth it or not to make it exclusive on PlayStation. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm sure it was all part of the same deal that puts PlayStation, or puts uh, Final Fantasy VII and its remake stuff on PlayStation I'm sure. Yep. Um... A blanket deal for I, the I don't know. I mean, I'm sure at the time it seemed like a better idea than it turned out to be because Final Fantasy is just sort of... It's sort of that thing. I mean, it's, I I do think it's time just for a market reevaluation of Final Fantasy because I have been informed by friends, children, and my own uh, experiences. Final Fantasy is apparently for old people. Oh, really? Um, Which is it, weird because it does not look like it's made for old people at no, all. It's written, Other than Final it, Fantasy 16. It's written for 12-year-olds, yeah. but it's actually... <laughs> here's the thing. The, I, I saw friends like 10, 12-year-old kids saying that stuff like, like Final Fantasy 7 was too juvenile for them. Okay. Because they expect writing on the level of something more mature mm -hmm. now. Just because that's what they've been... You know, you're talking about kids that expect something on the level of what Nickelodeon cartoons look like, and actually those are written... They are they do not write down to the audience mm -hmm. in those, yeah. not since Avatar, yeah. really. Um, and basically, like, one one kid, she was just like, oh, like, I, those, game, like the, those games are for, like, my dad, because he was a kid when that came out, and he likes it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and she's not wrong. No, like, yeah. Like, there's not a lot there if you don't already have an investment in the brand, and they've done nothing in the last 10, 15 years to invest younger audiences in that brand. Yeah, that's true. Like, Final Fantasy XIII didn't bring anybody in from the out from no. the cold. I mean, if know? anything would work, it would be their mobile games. Yeah, and that just hasn't. The, yeah. In part because they're too fucking expensive. Yeah. Like, they charge for them. <laughs> like, I'm sure there's kids that would love Final Fantasy VI just the way I love Final Fantasy yeah. VI, but no one wants to pay $30 for a mobile port of a 30-year-old game. Yeah. It's, that's and, a, and that's a dollar a year. That doesn't make any sense. It's not wine. What are you fucking doing? <laughs> and generally, those ports are not very good no. either. That doesn't help things. So. I mean, they fixed it. Like, they, they did fix Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, yeah, you can't trust them. Yeah. And, and once you lose the trust of someone for, like, a port or one of those things, you never get it back, especially for the prices they're charging. It's just ridiculous. I don't think Final Fantasy will ever be a platform exclusive again unless, unless Xbox goes away. No. As long as Xbox exists, I think every Final Fantasy from now on is going to come out day and date on both platforms. Well, I think as long as another platform of the power to handle it exists, right. they will do it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And maybe a Nintendo's next console can actually do that, and then uh, it would have... No. <laughs> Probably let's not. not. Let's just go <laughs> no with that. Um, although, you know, you never know. I, I do think there's going to become a scaling back of even the AAA stuff in terms of fidelity, you know, every and... and there's going to be whining about it, but I think in terms of survival, it's going to have to happen um, just for the franchises, let alone the industry. Um, and you're already getting people whining about how big the installs are on things. We're like, you know, like, oh, how come it's 120 gig install? It's like because you want instant load times, 4K visuals and 4K textures on all the rocks. Yeah. So that's how big the installs are. Now. Yeah. Like that's, you yeah. know, they're trying Huge to meet textures. the audience's demands. And if they don't, then the audience whines. And if they, you know, Whatever the, the, the trade-offs that are required for meeting those demands, the audience whines about those, too. Yep. So there's no way to win. And at a certain point, you're going to have to just drop those budgets and drop the time spent in development because that's what that's costs where the, the budget, that's comes, where the budget from. comes from. Yeah. Paying people to work there for years, especially yeah. for artists, because as many of my other dev friends have said, you know, you can make any game with 30, 30, what was it? 30 designers, 15 producers, and two creative leads. And five hundred. However artists. many artists you need, like that's yeah. it. That's it. That's a show. The game. The game team is that, and anywhere from ten to ten thousand artists, yeah. depending on how big. You know, that's the difference between a triple A game and an indie that's game. True. Is yeah. th a thousand artists. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, because they have to make all these textures and models yeah. and areas. It's, and that's what costs all the money. All the clutter that goes all into every room. You know, people go on. You know, I. I mean, I am not going to defend Star Citizen by any fucking means. <laughs> but people talk about well, where did I, they made almost a billion dollars? Where is that money gone? Paying people in a, in a three-part, three-continent yeah. development studio <laughs> for 12 fucking years. Yeah. That's where the money went. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's a lot of money. People, you got to pay people to live. Yeah. 
So yeah, that costs a billion dollars after 10 years. Yeah. And when you don't put a game out, it's weird. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Final Fantasy going forward going to be multi-platform. If there is such a thing as multi-platform going forward. Yeah, I mean, I... We'll I, see how that all plays out. No re- I don't think limiting it to anything has helped anybody. Yeah. Nobody, bought a, nobody bought a PlayStation for Final Fantasy 16 or Final Fantasy Rebirth. Although, to be fair, those were kind of the only console exclusives coming out for that console over the last couple of years. Yeah. Well, been the Final Fantasy games. So not, it's kind of saved its, its ass well, a little bit. It's got a war. It's Horizon. It's all that. But they're a long time ago. Horizon was like a, two years ago. Yeah. Those were... I mean, Horizon was a year after launch. God of War was at launch. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's four years ago now almost. Time Sp- flies. Spider-Man. They I mean, had got, a decent got, launch. They, they had one, Demon's they Souls got, remake they got, and they Ratchet. They had about one big one per year. Yeah. Um, Which is not good enough, in my opinion. Well, I mean, people, I think you're you're long in the tooth on the on the system in general now. People who wanted it got it. Yeah. And then when it became available, the last few people that hadn't been able, be able to find one got it. And now that's that. Now they need games to motivate them to, to buy consoles. So. Well, no, you're done. That's it. Like, it's all downhill from here. I mean, they the only have generation. 50 million out right now. Yeah. On PS5. Like, I think like, that's about. They've still got about another 100 million to go to catch PS4. They're never catching PS4. I PS, don't think they will either. PS4 but, is an anomaly. In although they're regard. still tracking just a little bit ahead of PS4 right now. But again, like, PS4, like, it never had laws like this. Like, a little mm. bit. Like, you'd have one year where there are only three exclusives. Yeah, like, I, th- I think you're still... I don't think it's going to beat PS4, but it's not. Gonna, you're not going to see it, the bottom drop out of it or anything. Like, it's because people just associate video games with PlayStation. Nobody, yeah. nobody knows... They're rollerblades Nobody now, yeah. knows that Call of Duty is also on Xbox. Like no, you're right. Most people don't. Nobody Until they, knows. If they were to take it away. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows that the, that all yeah. these things they play on PlayStation are multi-platform games. They think of them as PlayStation yeah. games. Grand Theft Auto 6. Do you think the vast majority yeah. of people who buy that game are not going to realize it's on another system? No, you're right. I agree. Yeah. They don't even think about the other systems. It's true. Um, interesting times here in the industry, and it's just trickling down to all these franchises, including Final Fantasy. Uh, next up, a game that a lot of you guys have been tracking. Matt and I are not huge fans of. Stellar Blade, a demo for the game, is coming out on Friday, so just in a few days. We knew this was coming because the demo was accidentally posted about a week and a half ago. Some YouTubers saw it, downloaded it, played it, and uploaded it. It's like an hour long almost. So um, it will be live for everybody on Friday. Well, if you're a PlayStation 5 owner anyway. And again, it's pretty lengthy. We have the whole playthrough of it up on Sifted right now if you want to check it out. If you don't feel like downloading the demo and playing it yourself. But anyway... I know some of you guys are really excited for this game. You guys will get a taste of it for yourselves on Friday. Um, and then our last thing for housekeeping for episode 381. We talked about this in last the last episode as well. Toys for Bob very bravely told Microsoft to piss off mm. and was like, hey, I know you bought us, but we don't want to be a part of you guys. Will you let us go? Microsoft very graciously said, sure. And then Toys for... We, we didn't buy them for you. Yeah. Okay. Let's, <laughs> well, then, let's be honest. Right. Well, then Toys for Bob, like, puts out this thing saying, you know, well, we want to... We're going to be independent, but we'd also like to work with Microsoft if we mm. can. And we even said on the show, that means to us that they probably already logged down a deal. And as it right. turns... Why would you say that publicly if you're Right. Not and as it turns out, that. that's exactly what happened. Microsoft has already signed Toys for Bob's new game, we don't know yet if it's going to be a console exclusive. However, I would argue probably smart for it not to be. <laughs> a lot of that will depend on Microsoft and how much it's investing in the game and how much it's, it cares about exclusives when it comes out in two years. Because mm-hmm. my guess is that's when it'll finally come out. Any guesses on what kind of a game it might be? Because no. they did Skylanders, plus they also do all the Crash stuff. Yeah, but they also did Star Control. Right. And they still own Star Control, I think. Yeah. I mean, I really have no idea what Could they be might anything. do next. Um, they did Skylanders. They could do. My guess is, if I had to, if someone held a gun to my head and said, "Guess what? Toys for Bob is going to do," I which think would be a very weird hostage. It situation. sure would. <laughs> but if that were to happen, I would say that they're going to make their own IP platformer. That would make sense. That'd be my guess. I, I don't think they're going to go back to the Skylanders toys stuff. No, or, nobody's going to do that. The, yeah, the, the, the toy attic thing is done, dead, deader than disco, as they say. I think Toys for Bob wants its own IP that it can then move forward so. with. I think it's either, of. either a new IP that is in the platformer space or uh, bringing back Star Control. Yeah. Star, those two things are sort of, your, I think, your best bets for them. Yeah. So anyway, my guess is we won't hear anything about this for until like next year. Yeah, at least. Because right now it's probably just all concept and stuff like that. And there's, there's paperwork to sign and yep. 
Lots of lots of money Things to change to hands. Things to approve, and, yeah. <laughs> lots of money to change hands. Staffing to to up. Yeah. Um, so anyway, just a little update on what's going on. I'm at sure. It, I mean, hopefully this is like a guerrilla game situation where they've you know, been working, toiling away on all this Activision garbage for so long that like they've had their own ideas percolating internally for years. Yep. And they and probably then, pitched them already. And Microsoft oh, yeah. was like, no. Or Activision Blizzard was like, no. We, yeah, we need like, you to keep no. doing this thing that we have you doing. I mean, it really sounds like maybe there was a thing where they were like, we want to make this game. And if you let us go, we'll make it for you. Yeah. And Microsoft was like, all right, cool. Seems that way. Yep. Like, it seems like the most copacetic arrangement. Yeah. So we'll find out about that probably next year would be my guess. Mm-hmm. Somewhere around Summer Game Fest also, time. I'm sure it helps that they're, but they've been around for... 30 some years yeah you know, it's like it's not like you're dealing with like newbies or like a startup no. or so you no, know they trust them already yeah they you know these guys are going to come through yep. or something yep if you give them money they're going to actually finish with a product uh so there you go that's our housekeeping for game face episode 381 it's time to get into the bulk of the show and all the reviews we have for today's show but before that here's a word from our sponsor ls cream LS Cream is a fine cream liqueur created by fellow gamer and sifter Stevens Charles. It's inspired by an ancestral recipe from Haiti called Cray Mass, and a double gold winner for its original taste at the New York Wine and Spirit International Competition. LS Cream can be enjoyed on the rocks or as a mixer for drinks with its rich blend of fresh cream and neutral grain spirits with notes of coconut, vanilla, cinnamon, and nutmeg. It's great in coffee or to make espresso martinis. To learn more, discover amazing drink recipes, or to track down your own bottle using a handy store locator, head to creamls.com slash sifted. That's creamls.com slash sifted. Well, one thing I definitely did not do this week was drink alcohol. (laughs) That was not on the agenda. In fact, that was the last thing on my mind was having anything to drink, but... If you do want to support our sponsors, please go to creamls.com slash sifted. Try to use that URL if you can. Um, you can go there. You can find a store locator to help you find it locally. You can figure out how to get it shipped to your house. If you do go to the stores and you're just poking around in your local liquor, liquor store, liquor, your, liquor, your local liquor store, this is the bottle that you should be looking for. It is very distinctive, very easy to pick out among all the other bottles at the store. Matt and I both love LS Cream. We swear by it. We love it. We mix it with everything we can. And you should too. Again, go to creamls.com slash sifted. Again, try to make sure you remember to use all the URLs that we throw out to you guys um, because sometimes you get discounts, but most importantly, it helps them track to make sure that you guys are actually following up on the stuff that we're sponsored by. It makes a big difference for us and for LS Cream. Big thanks from us to LS Cream and Cray Mass. All right, with that, it's time to get on. With Game Phase 381, we got a bunch of reviews in today's show. Let me just do a quick clock check here. Okay, we're, I think we're okay. Matt, if I push it along a little bit, don't get offended. I mm-hmm. uh, just want to make sure we get it, we get everything in before we get to the end. We have a lot to get to. Um, as you might expect, you're probably not surprised to find out, we're going to start today's show with Dragon's Dogma 2. Easily the biggest release of the week. Also, mm-hmm. I think it might end up being one of the biggest releases of the year. Yeah. Um, I think you will see this on a lot of the Game of the Year nomination lists. Yeah. Did I draft it second on my team? I think Second it, or third. Yeah. Up there. And I'll be honest, I was reluctant to draft it. Must have been second because I, I think I would have taken it. I think way. it was second. And I was reluctant to take it there. Um, right now, it's Metacritic is sitting around an 8.7. Hmm. Um, and I will just say that I am pleasantly surprised that it got an 8.7. And I am thankful for that because I personally don't think it deserves an 8.7. I think it deserves a nine. Really? Or higher. Wow. It's one of the best games I've played in years. Wow. Okay. Well, there we have a difference of opinion here on uh, Game Face. Um, well, you ran into a very specific situation. Yeah. And maybe I should just explain what happened to me right mm-hmm. now because it made me quit playing the game. So <laughs> um, I was about five, six hours into Dragon's Dogma 2. And probably the other thing we should talk about right off the top, and let me get some B-roll rolling here as well. Um Probably the first thing we should talk about over the top is that the save system in this game is unlike, I wouldn't say it's unlike anything, but it's unlike most games Mm -hmm. today. It is pretty much the save system from the first game. 
the entire game is pretty much the game from the first game. Right. Uh, well, not, like the system. A lot of the systems are are very similar. It's an evolution yeah. of what was very. It's way more similar than I thought. It would roughly be. sketched in the first game, and now yeah. everything kind of works. Yeah, more yeah. Or less. But yeah, it's basically like because they want you to feel like when you leave town you're in danger yeah and you are and you are um, <laughs> you absolutely sort are. of like you, at you, night you, in you particular. never you never lose anything if you die mm-hmm. uh except yeah, it's time. not like dark souls not dark where souls you drop yeah. it and you have to go back and pick it up or anything but you're just gonna have to like you know if all you're you're gonna have to fight your way not even fight because you'll die you'll yeah. have to, you gotta sneak your way back to town or, or yeah. something because like you, you're not gonna make it too far without allies um, so there's two kinds of saves in this. There's the auto saves and manual saves that you can save whenever you want. And then when you when you rest at an inn, you get a save there as well. Mm-hmm. Now, generally, is that's fine yeah. because more like, and more yeah. I don't understand what the inn saves are for. I don't either because I always quit. Although my, the... as I get to my story, Matt, my game would have ended if it weren't for the inn save. Mm. So there is a purpose to it. But I think my case was extreme. I hope it's extreme. I hope nobody else goes through what I went through with this game. I'll just put it to you that way. Um, so anyway, you have these two different kinds of saves. And I had been playing, I don't know, six hours or something like that. I had gone to an inn, of one, the first inn in the game, and saved there. I fought all the way to the second town and the second inn. And I got there. And I did not have enough money to save. You have to pay to stay at the inn. I didn't have enough gold to stay at the inn. And I would thought to myself, I'm like, well... I got here, no problem. I didn't even come close to dying. I kind of wrapped my head around how to not die in the game at that point. And I was like, I feel pretty confident I can make it to the next one. So so, so you're you're trying to get... So I, I'm guessing you're going from... You're trying to get to from Maeve or whatever it is to mm-hmm. the capital. To the capital, yeah. yeah. So that's exactly what happened. So um, I'm like, I think I can make it to the capital without saving. I didn't think I was in danger. Even though the game does tell you... When you first boot it up, hey, our save system's a little weird. Mm-hmm. Like, you might want to pay attention to it. It did, like, set up a flag for me. But, again, I had not had any issues in the game at all. I had walked to those first two ends without much problem. And so I'm like, okay, it may get a little tougher. I should be okay. And I was right, actually. So that next trip before you get to the next inn is much longer than the first two. You fight for a long ways, then you meet up with somebody, and you get in a cart, and you ride in the cart for a while, and then you finally get to the capital. And what happened to me was, I did all that. I got to the capital. I'm like 100 yards away from the capital, and I get out of the cart, and I'm walking towards the capital, and I'm on a bridge. And like I get presented by some enemies. And I see the enemies, and I took a second just to think about them. And be like, okay, how do I attack these guys? You know, how should I go about this? As soon as I figured out my plan of attack, the bridge that all my entire party is standing on collapses out of nowhere. My entire party. Is this the big bridge, like outside the town? I think so. The wooden one? I, it's the wooden one, yeah. yeah. And so the bridge collapses. My entire party, all my pawns and me, fall like 100 yards way mm-hmm. down into the water. Yeah, so, so just. I'm, so I'm very curious what caused that because it's, I don't it's know. not a scripted thing. It's, like, not? it's not? No, no. It's, so that, that doesn't didn't happen, happen to me. In, wow. No, that, that, the only two bridges have broken in my game, and they're, they're ones I broke on purpose. Oh. Um, actually, you no, know, one time it did have this little bridge. I was, I was shooting uh, magic bolts, and I was accidentally hitting the end of the bridge instead uh. of the enemy, and it broke, and, and I fell down. The pawns didn't, but I fell into the river and had to fight my way back up. So I. No, that big, that big bridge is fine. It collapsed. It, and yeah. my, me and my whole party fall 100 yards down into the water below. Now. They don't. They can't figure out how to get swimming to work in this game. So it's no, like a workaround. They created this goofy monster that lives in the water. Yeah, so the, br- the brine creature. <laughs> so if you fall is, in the yeah. water, it starts attacking you. Yeah. So me and my whole crew fall in the water. Everyone's killed instantly. Yeah, that's the problem. Is uh, if you fall in the water, it basically you get the tentacle thing and it teleports you to the shore. Yeah. If your pawns fall in the water, they die. They die. So all the pawns died. I technically kind of died too, but they respawn me, and they respawn me on this cliff's edge where I have only one way to run. The only way that I can run, there are these crazy lizard creatures with like 15-foot poles that are just stabbing me and knocking me off. So they knock me off of the cliff, back into the water. (laughs) I get attacked by the monster again. It respawns me back at the same spot, and this time there's wolves. They start attacking me, and I cannot get away. Wolves this, hunt in packs, this, Arisen. This, this pattern repeats four times until my health is completely wiped out, and the only thing left that I can do 
is go to my in save. And well, so what you should have done is gone back to the ma- main menu and load the the tops not the in save but the load the save. Odds are it would have reset the enemies when you did that. Every, every no time way to I really respawn, there is different enemies there, but mm-hmm. they always just knock me back into the water or just I will, kill me. So I will say this. Um, well, let me finish, though. Yeah. So that happens. I go through that, and I load the in save. I went from level 13 to level 2. All the gear. that's the last time you saved yes, at the end. All the gear, everything that I had done for the past five hours just mm-hmm. gone and I basically looked at the TV set and said, fuck you. And I turned it <laughs> off and I never turned it back on again until last night at like midnight. I'm like, oh, I'll boot it up and I'll just poke around. Like, so mm. I didn't like, I played for another hour and a half last night probably, but it was me just running around the world checking stuff out. Mm. I wasn't like, I like did a couple side quests or whatever. And that is where my experience with Dragon's Dogma 2 mm. ends. So I will say this, as someone who has played probably 300 plus hours of both game, Dragon's Dogma and Dark Arisen and this one, I played the first one to the end twice. I played the Dark Arisen one to the end once. Um, lot played a lot of Dark I guarantee you if you'd given me the controller, I could have gotten you out of that. You can always you can outrun everything in this game. No, you, you, yes, you there can. There is no way. So, no, so let me explain. There is a way. Let me 100%. explain. Let me explain it, Matt. Let me bring me up. This is you, this is like talking. if I told you I couldn't do something in Call of Duty and you know you can do it and you're telling me that I'm wrong. Let me explain like, it. Let me explain it. So it doesn't matter. You can outrun the lizards and the wolves and everything. No, absolutely. Let me explain it, Matt. So when I would spawn, it would be the over my shoulder, looking at the water mm-hmm. before I could even spin around. I'm getting attacked from behind. Knocking me off the cliff into the water. If I was lucky, I was fa- I'd be fast enough to spin around the camera before I started getting attacked and knocked off. What there was no escape. I'm a fighter. You can't just turn around and block? No. There's like well, three of them. Well, I could. I don't know if I could block three at a time. If there's three dudes with poles attacking me off time, like if I block one, the other two are going to yeah. get me. Well, so the, the, what I would do in that situation is I would instantly be running for, to one side. I tried. The the Man, I tried everything man i could not get out of the loop like it there was like so there, there was three dudes with poles but then when it was the wolves there were eight wolves it, right the wolves are actually harder to get away from than the lizards usually but they were hitting me with the poles and well, knocking me into the water right but you just got to get around i don't know i couldn't I, I i tried everything dude i tried i had five chances to do it before it finally wiped out all my health there was nothing i could do man i've been playing games for 40 years there's nothing i could do 300 hours of dragon's dogma i guarantee you i could have gotten you out of it anyway well somebody who hasn't played dragon's dogma for 300 hours was fucked i was fucked if it was you and you didn't play 300 hours you would have been fucked too so that's what happened and i said fuck you to dragon's dogma 2 and never played it again. That's unfortunate because one of the best. Well, games I'm glad ever made. that I knew you were going to keep playing. Like, if, yeah. if I didn't have you, I probably would have kept playing. But I also had realized it. Well, this I thought point, it, I was relieved because it meant I didn't have to play so much Rise of the Ronin. Right. But <laughs> so it actually worked out. But well, no, it didn't because now we got to talk about it next week. So I do have to play more Rise <laughs> of the Ronin. So it didn't benefit me at all. You don't have to. Like, I got. Here's the thing, though. Like in those six there's, hours. There's a sneak preview of what I think of Rise of the Ronin, <laughs> by the way. Here's the thing, though. Like in the six hours that I played it, like I. I get it. Like, I, it's not for me. Like, I can see already. It's another one of those mean-ass games that fucks you over, and, like, either you're patient enough to deal with it or you're not. It I really don't wanna, isn't, though. It, like, not in the way Dark Souls I mean, is. if you read any of the reviews, that's what every review says. Like, the the strap line for every review for this game is only for the patient. You, It's a mm. great game, but you need to be patient. And I just... I, we gotta no. be patient. I, I, I looked at this, see, and I was I think like, that's wrong. I could be doing the, anything. I have... 5,000 records that I'm trying to digitize right now. And I'm like, fuck this game. I'm going to go digitize some fucking records. Like, it's a better use of my time. Like, I understand other people like these types of games. I don't. I never have. I don't think I'm ever going to. Well, that's kind of the thing, though, is there is no other, there is no type of this game. Dragon's Dogma is its own It reminds me of Dark Souls in the From Software games. It reminded me of Elden Ring. I mean, there is some Elden Ring. It's easier. There is some Elden Ring element to it. I mean, I don't know how, I I assume Elden Ring came out long ago enough that they can, they they inspired some things A little thing. Some things, yeah. Certainly Certainly the way the vistas work. Um, There were, I mean, part of that's just the engine. Part of the fact that they're dealing with modern tech and not when Dragon's Dogma 2 was, Dragon's Dogma 1 was made was the 360. Um, the, the, the ability to get up and see everything to, you know, they're ta- the pawns are constantly telling you to climb the statues to look around at things. Like, that is clearly inspired by things like that. Um, but in terms of, I mean, when you die, you just get respawn sort of nearby. Yeah. And I hadn't had any problem it, with it until that 
particular instance. Well, I did. So were you just restarting from like the when you get the it's like the thing. Well, oh, you failed. Do you want to load this or load the in or go back to the title? I would screen? just load my latest save or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. I would, for future reference, if anyone did, had runs into that, I would definitely go back to the title screen and load the save from there in hopes that it resets the world a little bit because sometimes it. So does I did that. do that. That is not guaranteed. It had already copied over my save. Like the auto save, what the in? Mm-hmm. No, before you never load the in. I, I, what I mean is never load the in ever, what, ever, ever. If you no, I did that at first. Like I tried to load my manual save. It had copied over my manual save with me back at the end. That sh- that will only happen if you've load the in save first. Maybe I did do that. I can't remember. I tr- I tried everything. Yeah. I tr- I'm, but I'm like I didn't know a lot about how the save system works. I'd only used it once. I don't, man, I don't really know what the point of the in save is. I don't either. Well, I mean, if, the, the case, latest because you have when you go, when you load up the main menu, there's load latest save and load last in save. Mm-hmm. And the latest save, even if you and this happens to me all the time, I I stay at the in if I'm gonna if I know I'm gonna end the game session, I stay at the in, and then I quit to the menu save save and quit to menu. So my last save is always that last your, your last save is always going to be ahead of your last in save and i don't I mean i think the in save exists and this is a real clunky way to do this i think the in save exists because there are quests and things in this game that are timer based yeah. that you can fail yeah, that yeah. you can fail i mean look and failure in this game doesn't matter failure in this game is, is it doesn't intended. affect the story it does but not in a you're going to fail a story way. It, it just right. changes how the story unfolds. Yeah. There are better ways. I mean, ways you may not want it to unfold that way. Is... No, but f- too bad. Yeah. Like, you know, but I think the end save is so like the idea of how the dragon's dogma, like loop is supposed to work is you're supposed to sleep and then you're supposed to, you know, all charge yourself up and do the or, or camp, or whatever mm. the camping is not explained well. Um, yeah, I didn't even know about camping. So camping, <laughs> you'll find those like fire, little campfires yeah. periodically. So if you have a camping set, uh, which is which I don't. You, you probably do. Actually. Oh, really? It's in you, there. I just you start with it. It's uh, very heavy. I usually give it to my pawn because it it weighs like ten pounds. Yeah. There's a bunch of different types of camp sets and they weigh different things, but they're heavy enough that you probably don't want to carry them on your main character. Um, basically, you go up to the campfire. You go closer than you think you should. Actually, like I didn't realize how you how close you had to get. I'm like I don't I can't use the camp set. I don't understand. And eventually I wandered close enough to the fire. I'm like oh there's a prompt there. Fuck you. <laughs> so I so you hit the B button, and then you pick the camp. You can have di- there's different camping sets that apparently have different I don't know patterns on the tent. I don't fucking know. But what it the doesn't difference change is. how they work at all. No, I, not that I can tell. Okay. Um, I but I just stuck with the lightest one and used that. I don't know if there's a difference. Um, and you set up a camp and you can cook. Um, usually just meat. And the funny thing is that if you cook, you cook the meat and it cuts to a live action shot of meat cooking. Are you kidding me? No, not at all. Like it's, a video It's tape? a video. It's live action video, high res 4K video of meat cooking because they wanted the food to look really, really good and appetizing, but they decided that the graphics weren't cutting it. So they just fucking shot meat. Are you kidding me? No, that's, that's 100% <laughs> true. That's great. 100% real. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the next level in the, uh, in the mouth watering JRPG <laughs> Food Wars is actual cooking shows yeah. in the middle of your campfire. So you can do that. So, better or, so it's better or worse than Gran Turismo 7. <laughs> Remember how they had, like, food in there? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think the video in this is a little grainier than GT7, oh, really? I would say. I think so. I, I don't think it's as good. I can see the I can see the, the digitizing a little bit. Yeah. That might just be the, D, the, the DLSS. I'm just though. kidding, obviously. But. Um, no, I, I've thought about it. It's not quite high quality enough to pass as game graphics <laughs> So on, on the PC anyway. Maybe uh-huh. it's, it's more even on the consoles. But, like... Yeah. And then you can go sleep. And if you do that, the, the the better quality meat gives you a bigger boost, and st- all your stats get boosted by that for until the next time you rest or something. And then you go rest, and you rest till morning or nightfall, and then you go. So and that re- replenishes all your health, all everything. Like it's just, it's just like staying in it in, but it doesn't cost you anything. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing that I didn't understand for like the first ten fucking hours of the game: it doesn't use up the camping kit. The camping kit is eternal. It goes on forever. You don't. It doesn't run out. I thought if I used it, it went away, and I have to buy another uh, one, and they're like six hundred bucks. You bought another one? No. Oh, okay. I just like eventually I used it because I was so fucking beat up from this fight against the Griffin. Well, the economy also like, is stingy in this game. Like that's not true though, because oh, really? it, it is at the beginning when you're just doing. 
I so I and I spent. That's why I didn't so, pay to that second in. I was short, and I'm like, so, I could go out and no, like, so kill a I couple went, monsters. So but. I went. I was. I mean, I'm in the capital doing this stuff. That, so I uh, there's an early quest where you're given a key to the dungeons of the capital, mm-hmm. and I didn't. I wanted to keep the key. I didn't want to use it up in the quest, and then like that. So I wanted to go. Uh, somebody there was a rumor I'd heard from one of the other NPCs that said like I heard way off in the checkpoint to the west. Um, there's a, someone who can can counterfeit things. And that was a thing in the first game. You could counterfeit just about anything with these forgery guys. So I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm going to go west until I find this checkpoint place and counterfeit the key so I can keep a key to the dungeon just in case I need it. Because yeah. if you get captured or arrested, you can then just get out of the dungeon, right? right? right. That's what was a thing in the first game, too. So, I, so I, I, spent, I spent all the money I had, basically, on upgrading my gear and getting the best gear I could have and all that stuff. So we're, we're doing That's pretty good. That's what I had done, too, which is why I was so devastated when so I lost it So we're doing pretty good. <laughs> um, we didn't lose anything. Item wise, well, yeah, I did. When but I went when back reset, to level two, but like yeah. dying doesn't lose you. That. No, no, like the insane. In my particular that. situation, I lost everything. But I, here, but here's, but um, what I'm saying is, what you had is nothing. Well, yeah, um, it was crappy. Because, yeah, I had played so, like so the so first I armor and everything, and... and I started wandering west, kind of trying to weasel my way towards that direction. We fought endless numbers of things and all this crazy, like weird side quests popped up and all this other weird loot things, and we got amber. Like there were like orcs or goblins painted up like fucking Viet Cong like guys in green camouflage paint that jump out of the grass at you like, wow. like a foot away and like eventually I look, I'm like they're not cheating like they're really there yeah, you just yeah. don't see them yeah, they're, yeah. Just camo- they're camouflaged it's, it's very yeah. well done finally I get to the place I get to the 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 play the checkpoint place i get to the forgery place i for I, I put in the forgery for the key then i come back in a few days so i just did side quests on that in that town for a while mm-hmm. because i was done with the key i got the key and i ran, went and i made my way back to the capital this, this takes this takes like five hours yeah by the way. it's a long trip yeah um which i really enjoy i really enjoy the wandering through the countryside and like kind of the exploration and like god knows what the hell's around the next corner thing that this game has yeah um it is that way i get back sure. to the i get back to the capital and I realized that this other quest I had that I assume is going to end in me being able to buy a house has matured and I can go do the end of it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I wonder if I can afford the house. And I look at the, I haven't looked at my gold in like since you got your hours since armor. I left, yeah. right? I have 78,000 gold from this one trip there Whoa. and back. That's not happened gold is for not, me. That's because it's not, <laughs> that, gold is not that plentiful in that first, until you get down to that first trip to the capital and then start, start spending. Starts and then the, the quest I completed in the process of doing that paid me 11,000. Wow. Like, yeah, I didn't get the, there. The, 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 the <laughs> money is there. not a problem after yeah. a while. Um, it was for me early. I needed like an extra 600 gold and I was and like, the other thing, I'd have to go kill like 10 dudes. Uh, they, 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 yeah, six hundred gold. I wouldn't even pick up anymore. It's yeah. just like it's that's uh, what does the difference for me in not making the save at the end, though. Yeah, and that coupled with the fact that I had faced no resistance really the whole at that point. Yeah, well, the, the the save at the end is uh, they are very expensive, and eventually you realize. I think the first house you buy is twenty thousand. Mm. So that's uh, yeah. Stand at the end is like fifteen hundred gold. Two thousand. It's one. It's one thousand. It's one thousand in the first place. Fifteen hundred in the next. 2,000 in the next, and 1,000 in smaller towns and 1,500 in larger towns. Yeah. Um, the other thing I learned going to the checkpoint thing, that map is huge. It is huge. Because yeah. the checkpoint... This game is huge. Because the checkpoint is like halfway across. Yeah. Have, it's, another, it's another nation yeah. on the other side of the map of this game. Look, I'm not surprised that you love this game. Man, it's one of your favorite games ever. Like, while I was playing it, I'm like, I know Matt's going to love this game. Yeah. But I also, you should I not mean, be I surprised Dragon, that I did not like it. I love Dragon's Dogma <laughs> 1, but this is like, if Dragon's Dogma 1 worked properly yeah. you know like <laughs> well the first like i use three guides when i go through dragon's dogma yeah, one because yeah. you got to remember this quest will disappear if you don't do this first no, it does. And that's yeah. Right. Yeah. this one has remedied a lot of that but it is still intensely weird it is a and very i don't mean just game. i don't mean like the, the subject matter isn't weird like this the subject matter is just standard high fantasy stuff the way they go about all of this in terms of game systems and how it all works and explaining and stuff explaining things it, it's bizarre. Like yeah. it's, it's like they don't really understand. It's obtuse what it is. in a lot of ways. Like, but there's opaque. like weird. I mean, but the the appeal of it is just how fucking weird everything. It is, is very you know, weird. Yeah. At one point, like I was like doing, you know, my my, my wizard can she can t- uh, hover a little bit. You mm-hmm. know, she can float, and so yeah. I use that if I jump off a high thing, I hover at the last second, and then I drop like a foot so I don't get hurt when I drop it. Last night I jumped off this little. I we done this thing, and I needed to jump down into this fight where like the guy we were escorting was being attacked by goblins so i jumped off the thing because we'd gone up this top thing to get to a chest yeah and i jumped off and i hovered briefly and dropped to the ground and the instant i touched the ground my pawn just 
face plants on the ground because she jumped off with me, oh, but she can't hover. Right. So she and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> like, well, that's one thing you realize very quickly in this game is that the pawns are just disposable. It's like, well, obviously for me, I lost my whole crew in like one weird moment, yeah. but but still, it's like. One thing I had to learn to get over very quickly was being protective of the pawns because the pawns don't level up. So eventually yeah. you're going to have to swap them out for pawns that are mm. of a higher level or you're, they're not going to be viable yeah. inside well, you, the game. You can swap them for their own selves. Uh, like, like a you, higher level version of themselves? Yeah, well, because like if, if the player you got them from is still playing. Oh, right. You know, because every time you save at the end, the other thing the end does is it updates your pawn. Yeah. So or tells you what people have been what using they your they, pawn. Yeah, they yeah. come back with Which stuff. Which is kind of really yeah. kind of cool, yeah. So like... So like Basically, if I, you can favorite the pawns, mm -hmm. you know, favorite the ones you like, and I've done that with several because there's a certain skill set I prefer, and there's certain all the other uh, so like, and there's certain skill sets I don't want, like there's because they all have demeanors now. They have like you know, it's like a straightforward. There's one called um, industrious or labor. It's, it's like it's something, and they just fucking take shit out of your inventory and craft it, craft with it. Like I went like. I was like running around, and all of a sudden, they, they, I suddenly they kept making the the new pawn kept making uh, healing potions, and I'm like, "Where are you making healing?" I'm like, and all my fucking green warish is gone. Well, the pawns now are like sick, and they're like spreading this virus around oh, they, yeah, inside can, the game. Yeah, they can get this dragon sickness that can lead to like murdering the entire town you're in, murdering you. Um, and like there have been reports of pawns murdering they'll turn their character. Yeah. But the big, I mean, the big thing that ha like somebody went to sleep in the capital and woke up and everyone was dead. Mm -hmm. And to and then there's a quest that opens for that where you have to get like it's called like an eternal or an, an and a grand wake stone or something that you can then use to bring everybody in the town back to life because until then the main quest is dead because the people you want to you have to talk to to do the main quest are dead. Yeah. Um. So it's a planned thing, but. Yeah, if you if you have a pawn you've picked up, and their eyes are glowing red, uh, get them killed or remove them from your party immediately. Yeah. Or you're gonna have a side quest you would prefer not to have to do. Yeah. But side quests like, in this were, are cool. I really liked them. Um, I liked uh, how some of them are timed, and if literally if you don't do them in time, they're gone. Yeah. Um, so there, it creates a little bit of a sense of urgency as you kind of figure out like how you're plotting your way through the different quests that you have open at, at a given time. Um, the story in this, and I should just say, like, the first Dragon's Dogma, I played 10 hours of it, maybe, before I kind of burn out on it. I wasn't reviewing it for game trailers. Miguel Lopez was. And so I knew I didn't have to play that much. And so uh, some of this stuff is familiar to me. Some of it's not. Some of the stuff that you're talking about, because I didn't make it that far in the first one either. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the plot in this, from what I remember, is pretty much identical to the first one. You're the chosen one, the arisen. Mm -hmm. You are, you can see, like, when you, you saw my character creator, like, your heart is plucked out of your body by a dragon, and you have to basically slay the dragon to get your heart back, but you're the chosen one who's supposed to lead the kingdom mm -hmm. against this dragon invasion, and... Well, there's different in this one in that there's an imposter arisen. Right. Um, that, and so you kind of got to prove yourself, and you're sort of working in a conspiracy to, like overthrow the imposter because the queen regent wants to keep her power and so she set up like a fake her son or something as a fake arisen but this but her older son is actually like on your side because he knows that like she's his mom is a jerk mm -hmm. um so that's sort of there's a lot there's a little game of thrones to it i guess yeah like they're trying to make it feel like a little like like a little like wheeling and dealing you have to go to a masquerade ball and all these things um i found the plot and the character to be pretty boring well, and it's drab. Not, it's, they're, they're, I mean, it make it better, but based nah, on not really. I, I don't think so. They're, I mean, maybe, but I've, you know, I haven't done a lot of main quest stuff just because I've been running around doing side things and just exploring because that's how that's I am. That's kind of what also seems like the it's, game kind of encourages it. Yeah, it's, it's, the, the story is just an excuse, a peg to hang yeah. the whole game on to like go yeah, around. It doesn't really drive the around. game. Yeah. No, like, you know, and it's like the boss, you know, there are no, there are boss things that happen, obviously. You just kind of stumble things, across but them. But you kind of yeah. find that, you know, and like, I mean, I was trying to find this lost kid who was supposed to be, they're like, oh, he grows flowers in the nearby, in a flower bed in the outskirts of town. Of course, it turned out where he was, and like, wolves kidnapped him. I'm like, wolves kidnapped him? <laughs> with their opposable thumbs. No, they grabbed him and dragged <laughs> him, like, mouth. ran away with him. And I'm like, you, that's not kidnapping, they ate him. Like, well, that's that is like, something that happens but, in this game a lot. Yeah, is the, the wolves enemies, will drag you around. Wolves yeah. will drag you around, enemies will the pick you up The harpies will pick you up and, and drop you. you. Like, that is one thing I thought was cool about this game that's yeah. different from almost anything else, is how you how much interaction there is between your characters and the enemies, and the yeah. enemies in you. 
Like being able to topple an enemy and knock him down and then yeah. unload on him. Like that's and all like, stuff that isn't really. And there's in other like games. things like the, one of the fun things about the pawns is the pawns will learn, and they're much better in this game than, than they were in the in the first one. They learn strategies and they learn how things work by watching other players. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll see a pawn do something, and or, and you're like, I can't believe you. Who trained you to do that? And sometimes you'll do something, and the pawn's like, I never would have thought of it. I'll tell my master when I get back to my my own world. And it's just like, okay, so. Whatever I just did, like that pawn's gonna duplicate that when they when the, the but like at one point this like I was I'm a mage. Uh, I started as a fighter to build up some defense skills that you can then transfer over to the whatever vocation you pick. Mm -hmm. So I, I switched to mage because I like mage in this series. And this goblin got in my hobgoblin goblin got in my face and started like hitting hitting. I, I couldn't get rid of him because I you know I can't defend. I'm a mage and I called for help. You know, the D pad can command the pawns vaguely. Mm -hmm. And vaguely. my fight my fighter pawn like it was from another player. It was like some random player. She, she runs over and she just picks the goblin up and like runs puts it over here and then just starts hitting <laughs> it to get it away from me. Right, and I'm right. like that's very funny. Like, <laughs> Um, but there's little. There's there's so much smarter in this game that I like. Like the, the they've led me into danger. Oh, a bunch they love of leading times. you in a way. It's like oh, that's an adventure to them. They love it. Yeah, but um, like they've taken me like. But for, you can't trust them. No, I, <laughs> that's what I learned very quickly. It's like they're like, hey, come on with me. I'm like, no, I'm not going with you. Last there's time I did that, you here. led me to like a troll that killed everybody. All like, they care about is there's a treasure chest yeah. there somewhere near that troll. Yeah. And stop ripping my elbow <laughs> apart. Jesus. <laughs> Funny. But like. Uh, yeah, so and the pawns are very funny. Like, I think. So yeah. talk to me about what happens after I stopped playing. Like, how do the systems start like folding in on each other? How does it all play out? I mean, it just gets kind of bigger. Um, like you get to the get to the capital, and um, you're supposed to go find. Uh, well, actually, you walk into the capital and you get arrested. Okay. By uh, by the guy, the, the the captain of the knights of the guard from the opening cutscene who introduces mm -hmm. the yep. the arisen on the throne. Yeah. And you get taken to an interrogation room. And he's like, I know you're actually the Arisen, and I'm, but I can't let on. So, so he's on your side, mm -hmm. and he assigns you like these three tasks you have to do to like start proving, showing people in the area that you're the Arisen and you're awesome. Because that is a big part of the game. And, yeah. Although some people just know. You walk into a town, they're like, Oh my God, it's the, the pawns Arisen. Know. Yeah. That's that's how the pawns all know. Because uh -huh. that's how they know is like something's up with you is you can command the pawns and they're defer right. they defer to you. And we should mention how you get pawns as well. Because you have like yeah. one pawn that's like your main homie. You have your your primary pawn is your is you have full control over, and then you can have two more if you want. And you go to you this get, you weird get more, like you get more XP. reality like shopping center. You for get pawns. more XP if you don't have other pawns. <laughs> yeah. Um. But you can't. But you can get two more. And generally, you want. I four. traveled with three. You generally yeah. want four. Uh, you and th the three pawns yeah. because you want to balance the classes. I have. I go everywhere with two mages, a fighter, and a thief. Mm -hmm. Um. No real reason to. You don't. The thief class is the star. Oh, of, it is. The, the thief is the thief. Does, I thought long and hard about the thief damage thief. is crazy. Oh, but wow. the thing is, I prefer having a pawn be the thief because the pawn auto targets better than I do. Ah. So the pawn always hits. Gotcha. But you'll see, like I'll I'll be like throwing spells at the guy, and the fighter will be hitting things, and we'll throw, and the life's kind of going, dr, 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 and then the thief will do his, his like spin and move and land on the thing, and then the life's Chunk. Going, <laughs> gone. <laughs> Um, the thief thief is really good. Okay. Um, and there's some other vocations that that open up later that you discover that are yeah, very there's, different. There's two new classes, right? There's like completely new ones. Mm, at least two, yeah. Yeah. So and one of them like just takes everything from all the other ones. There is a, a conglomeration class. Yeah. There's a, there's a fighter mage combination that's specifically built for fighting dragons. Um, that's like a pole arms mask. Like he uses spears, which yeah. is a new thing. And what's the one that has you like the pay, wanna, incense thing? You want to pay back the uh, that's one of the, new the ones lizards too. with the with the poles. That's that's the guy to do that with. No, oh. because uh, he basically can do the shit that the lizards are doing to you. Oh god, like yeah. the jump, like the dragoon stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't seen the 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 incense one yet. Yeah, he's also one of the new ones, and he can mimic. Like the enemies or something, if I remember. He can st he's like a blue mage sort of thing. I yeah. think. Yeah, he can steal stuff. Yeah, from steal skills from them or yeah, something. That's what I I, thought. temporarily yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen that one yet. So um, you get those three goals, and then what happens? And then you basically got to go do it. And like people come up to you and get side quests, they give you side. And quests you can do the things. three in any order that you want. Any to. order, and every time you go back to him, he'll have other things for you to do. And so, like, I would come, I did the, you know, go kill monsters in these three locations. Easy. Done. Mm -hmm. Go and do that. Come back. Tell him and, like, two more things. Uh, two new things I can ask him about. Get new quests for that. And every time you activate those quests, that activates new side quests. And usually that happens, like, automatically or people will run up to you and be like, I need this from you. Da, da, da. 
And like it all just sort of pretty organically unfolds. It's not like the first game where um, you ha you got most of your quests from the quest board. There's like a little bullet, literal bulletin board, and like if you weren't there in the right time to get them, they'd go away, and you mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to do them anymore. Um, I'm sure I've missed stuff in the game so far, but it doesn't feel like it. You know, if that makes the any game sense. does have emergent moments in it where yeah, you're just wandering around and shit just happens. And yeah. you're like, oh my God, hell just broke loose. Like, what am I going to do? Like, like I seen, like that about it. Yeah. Well, I've seen like one time I was, I was walking, it was like a Canyon thing and I was walking through it and all of a sudden lizards pop up. Mm -hmm. well, they're sleeping over here and they pop up and they start running towards us. And I'm like, okay, here we go. And all of a sudden, this boulder comes down and crushes one of the lizards. And, I'm like, and it's goblins. Have, they, they, they had a trap set, and instead of us triggering it, it was it got the, goblins, the, the lizard. The lizard and so the goblins it. start fighting the lizards, and we're fighting the lizards. And then we turn on the goblin. And, it's like, and then like an like a ox cart comes along, and the guards of the ox cart come in. And at one point, I was, so there's one quest where I was supposed to take. It can be annoying, though, like, because oh, you'll be in a fight. But you just and if the roll fight starts it. straying over to another area, oh, yeah. and suddenly more, more things like get three more dudes join the fight. Like it can spiral with, out of control. I had a fight with a necromancer that took all night, literally the whole night of the in, in game. Yeah. And periodically, things would just wander by and start attacking us. Ghosts showed up at one point. Yeah. Like skeletons would rise out of the grave. We moved yeah. to a different section of the graveyard. Skeletons would rise out of the grave. We had to fight zombies while we we're fighting the necromancer. And then the sun came up and he ran away. <laughs> we're gonna talk but about when, it. When the, if if a, if a monster runs away, when you find them again, their life hasn't recharged. Oh, that's good. At you, least. Like when I I found the necromancer again, like two nights later, and he only had like oh, a third and he'd been of gone through like nights and yeah, still the whole days passed oh wow same with That's the griffin cool. i so one time i it was part of a quest is the quest is introduces you to the ox carts mm -hmm. so one of the fast travel methods the fast travel method from the first game is still here which is the fairy stones mm -hmm. there's these things called port crystals that have been caught up in microtransaction complete, controversy com completely stupid completely irrelevant Oh really? Like, you don't think yeah. they matter? No. People have said Not that they so only much. get like two or three through the whole game, and now you can just pay for them. Like fairy the, the fast travel stones. I have yeah. like seventeen. Oh really? There's fairy stones fucking everywhere. Why are people they're freaking for, out? Because they're fucking idiots. <laughs> what and they're the just hell? they're just fucking stupid. I mean, I haven't got to that point, so I was like, there I just is, took their word for it. No, no, the microtransactions are completely pointless. Wow. They're, 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 it, there's okay. an online store option in the main menu when you start the game, and it is never mentioned again. Everything you can buy in the microtransaction store, you can get readily and easily in the game every time. Everything. There's nothing, in, and none of it Crazy ever directs to people are freaking out about it. And, I, and everyone's like, well, how do you know they didn't change it you know, to make it rare? Like, like because it's exactly the same as the first fucking game. The fairy stone system is exactly the same. Yeah. They even cost the same as they did in the stores in the in game. Yeah. Like, they're 10,000 gold. People are very gold. sensitive to anything. Capcom's been doing this for fucking 10 years. Yeah. Devil May Cry 5 was full of this shit, and you don't need any of it just don't buy it stupid yeah. should it be there of course not but it's it's the most unobtrusive like it's clear they never did anything to the game to like push those at all like it's just like if, if for whatever reason you want to buy a fairy stone for real money you, when can. you can just go get one for ten thousand gold at almost any store in the game i guess you can do that but why would you yeah. i don't know um but like you can so you use a fairy stone and you can teleport to any port crystal and there's like port crystals in some of the major settlements mm -hmm. and eventually you can find port crystals that you can put anywhere you want they're portable i think you can have 10 around the whole world map okay at least that was the limit i think that was or maybe it was seven in the first game so people were complaining about nothing pretty much yeah completely completely complaining about it. it's nothing absolutely nothing um i mean should microtransactions be in there of course not but like they're completely irrelevant. You never, ever, ever, ever need to engage with them. And honestly, if people hadn't been whining about them, I wouldn't even know no. they were in the game. <laughs> there you I go. would never have. You like you bought you Strysand affected this shit. Because yeah. the only reason I know you can buy a, a fairy stone is because of people whining online. Yeah, that's it. That's hilarious. You're the best marketing Capcom could ask for. <laughs> Good job, idiots. So, so, you, uh, so, uh, the, but the new fast travel, fast travel is ox carts. So uh, there's they're like these. Giant carts pulled by oxen. You saw one when you were yeah. trying to get to the capital the first time. Um, you pay 200 gold, which is nothing, uh, and you get on the ox cart, and you can either sit there and watch it as it very slowly travels across the entire world that you need where you want to go, uh, which will literally take you hours, or you can doze off, which will usually, you will wake up at your destination. Sometimes you will wake up and After you're being it? attacked. Oh, being attacked. And I woke up, and we were being attacked by by uh, goblins. Mm -hmm. So again, I got to get out of the cart, and like there's soldiers that are guarding the cart too. So you and your pawns and the soldiers get out. We're gonna attack the goblins. Okay, attack the goblins, 
And suddenly, a life bar pops up, and a shadow comes over us, and a griffin attacks us. <laughs> and it shatters the cart. Oh, wow. Like, it's gone. Like, it, jump, <laughs> it jumps down on the cart, and it's just splinters. And we're fighting this griffin, and the oxen joined in like the oxen are like headbutting the griffin and the griffin's like fuck you and like, like and we're all That's just great. fighting this griffin yeah and they start to um and and it get it get the, you get it down to one life bar and it's it runs away and i'm like no we're not running we're gonna get it so i jumped on it and it starts flying away with me with you with me on. on it and i'm like and we're just flying over the country we fly over the village we're like i'm like i don't know what now to what? do yeah like I'm, I'm like i'm on this griffin and finally like i, I my stamina ran out and i fell off it and I'm just falling forever. And I'm falling down, and I hit the 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 um the the float button because uh -huh. I'm still a wizard. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, maybe I can save myself. But I hit it a little too early because I couldn't look down and gauge distance properly. Right. You're I was falling still like, so fast. I was still like thirty feet up. Yeah. And I'm like, oh well. So I just like start falling, <laughs> and I get caught by a pawn. What? He just catches me. No like, way. My, my warrior pawn had somehow ran ran miles. miles. <laughs> And like just blinked into it, and then he caught me. He's like, he's like, he's like, good job, Arisen. I'm like, good job, what? We just fucking lost the Griffin. I don't even know where we are anymore. Like, and then I had to like figure out where we were because we're yeah. in the middle of an area we hadn't been to before. That this was, game is awesome. That was like, the other thing that broke my heart about falling on that bridge was I fell like 30 minutes down. <laughs> So initially, I'm just like, oh, God, now I have to fight through that 30 minutes again. And then it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. I was like, what the hell is this game doing? But while I'm playing this, I knew that you would love this game. Like, I, there's just certain games and things that you like or about when you, games. And when you hit the ogre, it's like you run into this like big ogre across like this gap. And you just hit him enough. And if you hit him enough, he trips and falls and like lands like with his hands like on the other. Yeah. You just cross him like a bridge. Like a bridge, yeah. yeah. I think they set it up that There's way. an achievement for that. Yeah. But you can actually make the big, big enemies fall across cross gaps and use them as bridges yeah um and there's a health system which is kind of unique it has like a cumulative oh, health depletion yeah. oh and by the way I, I, once i got to the uh, so i just kept going on that quest i'm like fuck the ox cart like yeah. it didn't work out very well did it? <laughs> so i just ran there and i get there and I, I give the thing to the guy and he's like okay tell the tell the, the guy the, the good job or whatever thanks uh -huh. for that or whatever so I, when i get back to the capital i tell the guy he's like He's like, ah, you're back, and the thing is delivered, and the ox cart is intact. And I'm like, no, it isn't. What are you no, fucking it, talking? It didn't no, register no, that the cart had been destroyed. has no idea. <laughs> I mean, well, why would he care? He's a rich merchant. He doesn't yeah. care. He doesn't care about ox cart people. Yeah. But I just thought it was funny that like the game did not realize Recognize that it. nothing had gone right in that entire quest. But yeah. that no one cares because the results were the same. But basically, if you take damage in this game, it chips away at your overall health meter, and you won't ever get your full mm. health meter back until you rest at an inn or um, camp. Or camp, right, which I had not ever done. So um, that's kind of unique, the way the health system works. There are also works, items. They're like recovery items that can give you some some of the loss meter back. Can you? But they're later in the game. Oh, okay. They're, gotcha. they're, not, uh, they're not common. Okay. But they're nice emergency yeah. things. Anything else that you'd like to mention about it? I'm at, obviously, I've kind of reached the end of what I've experienced playing it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's the same kind of thing. I mean, the, the magic spells are crazy dramatic and powerful. You're, you're, cast, call, you're calling down thunderstorms and cyclones and, and yeah well even like the ice spells you create this gigantic yeah. ice block that's yeah. like the size of a house like well, that's the, the scale thing. in this game is and really that's the thing is like how well some of this stuff just sort of feeds into itself like the um the lizard's weakness is ice mm -hmm. and it's cold-blooded i yeah, guess yeah. that's the logic there but one of the way but but also one of the best thing ways to deal with the lizards is to knock them on their backs so you cast the ice spell and it because it pops up from the ground right. and it flips, flips them up. in the air yeah. and then like the the warriors will run over and whack at it like that but at one point like the at once the the ice spell happens it kind of shatters and a lot of times it leaves little blocks of ice left and one of my pawns would grab the ice blocks and throw them at the lizards which would hurt them way more than just hitting them with the weapon that's another element of the game picking stuff up and throwing yeah. it is another gameplay element that a lot of games don't have like you can pick up an enemy and take it out of the fray and mm -hmm. set it down. And your pawns will come over and like finish it off. Yeah. Like, or like uh, there are things where like if a pawn goes down to revive them, you have to stand near them and hold the B button for a while. Yeah, and they wake up with the same amount of life you have. Yep. Which is actually if you have a like a if you're like tank pawn is running low on life because they've lost a lot of life and their loss meters down there. Let them die and run over and revive them. If you have a lot of life, they get more life. It's like back they have full It's like it's like they got the camping back. Uh, but yeah. like. The other pawns will go grab the dead pawn and run them back over to you and put them down yeah, in front yeah. of you so it's easier for you to run. Like the, the teamwork element here actually works way better than in the first game. I it's was not perfect. Yeah. There's a bunch of things where you're like, 
how can you not figure out how to get around that thing? Like, or, or like they'll they'll like fight something and fall off a cliff, and like that happened a few times where like my main fighter pawn, which is usually someone I get from another player, has like chased some enemy off a cliff and fell in the water and died. I'm like, now I'm in the middle of the wilderness. I have no fighter. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, so it's two mages and a ranger. Like, we're, we're all gonna die. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you got to go get find another rift stone and pull in one of those guys. Oh, the other thing to note, um, when you go to a rift stone in the in the world. You basically get a random smattering of pawns around your level, and yeah. you can hire whichever ones you want. Mm -hmm. If you go to the rift stone in the cathedral in the main capital, that is a grand rift stone or whatever. And in that one, you can specifically search for the types of pawns you want. Oh, and you can look at all your friends' pawns and your friends' pawns. So, the, and, and like you have to, it's, there's a currency called rift crystals, which you can buy as microtransactions. I don't know why you would, because I have thousands and thousands of rift crystals and have never used them for anything. Uh, but you can hire pawns higher than your like level span. Mm -hmm. They cost rift crystals. So if I hire somebody like like yeah, five, even on the street you run into them, it'll say RC how yeah. many you need to hire them. Yeah. Yeah. So if if you run into like a pawn that's like three or four or five levels higher than you, you might need to spend like sixty rift crystals. Yeah. So if you want to hire someone who's like double your level, you're going to spend like ten thousand rift, rift, rift yeah. crystals. Here's the thing: go look at your friends' pawns on that cath in the cathedral thing. All your friends' list pawns are free. Uh, and that includes the thirty-five level, the thirty-fifth level fighter I hired when I was level thirteen. Dang! From my friend on Steam. Wow. Okay. And so that helped. Yeah, that does um, help big time. <laughs> you don't have to worry about replacing them either, because to me the pawns are like a double-edged sword. Yeah. It's like they do w cool stuff. Like they caught me off guard a bunch of times. I'm like, wow. Like really? You want to? You're gonna do mm -hmm. that? Or you're gonna help me? Or you're gonna lead me there? But then like. Also, like I said earlier, it's like you don't want to get too attached to them because they don't level up as you play with them, and eventually most of them are going to need to be replaced. Right. So, but you can, like I said, you can favorite them and then go to that grand pawn and search for your favorites. Yeah. And if they've been updated since you used them last, like you know, say me, someone played with if them, they've been playing with them and sleeping at the inn. Yeah. You, now you can get a higher level version. It feels of like that, that happens automatically because I booted it up and I was at the inn <laughs> with nothing and. Like a message pops up and it's like, "Hey, your pawn's been out doing stuff yeah. with other people, and it brought back all this stuff." Like I didn't have to do anything. It just, no, that all happens yeah. like behind the scenes. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's 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 just pretty cool. As soon as you create your pawn, and every time you update the pawn yeah. through sleeping at the inn, it can be used for. But things. really, I mean, pawns really are just party members that just don't stay in your party very long. They just turn yeah. over constantly. Yeah. Yeah, and it's fine. It's like, a different way to do it. It gives you an option to like just sort of experiment. It also gives you an option to see different skills in other vocations yeah. to see if that's what you want. Yeah, when that's you get, true. It's a way of testing. It's almost like a third-party test drive of yeah. some of these skills. You can, you can find you know pawns that are of vocations you haven't unlocked yet and like yeah. things like that. It, it's it's cool. Yeah. Um. So and I, a lot of people, a lot of people for some reason don't put pants on them. I've noticed that too. <laughs> I would agree with the general sentiment of reviews, like. It takes a level of patience to play mm -hmm. this game. Um, you definitely have to engage with it. Yeah. Um, but it is not nearly... I mean, It's not as hard as From Software Not Software's as hard as, as From Software stuff. But it, yeah. is, it does kind of have that thing where it's like, well, you're going to have to... The game is what it is, and you're going to have to engage with it on that level. Yeah. Um, It'll but, screw you over sometimes, as I learned. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> again, you don't lose anything. Yeah. You just spawn Well, I did. I lost everything. Well, again, if you get away from those things, you, you, it's, not, it's not punishing you for dying. Yeah. You you if you die, you spawn a little ways away, and you don't lose any health. You, 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 you lose some health because you mm -hmm. you lose that loss thing. But yeah. like you don't lose. You know, there's no souls to drop or go pick up again. There's no. Yeah. You don't lose any money. You don't lose See, any. See, but items. I think what happened to me was like my health was gone, and I think it just automatically made me spawn back at the end because that's all I could do. Because you ran out of loss health. Yeah, I had all my health was gone. Like. Even like you know, as as you said or we said, as you take damage, your mm -hmm. maximum health goes down. It got to where my maximum health was zero, so I had been beaten up like eight times in a row. And I mean, that would death be a, loop. that would be a change from the first because the first game there was a minimum. Like you it always, would never go. You below always minimum. had like thirty health or whatever. Oh, yeah, basically, like you had one hit. Yeah, like, that's as low, low as it would go. If they change that, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would it would surprise me if there was a okay, you suck too much, you're going back to the inn thing, um, or if they did that, it would probably I would think it would be more of a, you know, somebody in an ox cart picked you up and and dragged you back to town kind of thing. Because like, I didn't choose the inn save until there was nothing else to choose basically. Like I chose like save your last save, and I was back at the inn. Hmm. 
Well, I'm not going to experiment with it. No, don't. <laughs> Definitely do I not. I believe they are going to update the save system. They did. I think they the um, patch today, I think, allows you to, one, delete a save and start a new game, which you could yeah, you not do. you couldn't start a new game, which is <laughs> which is so weird. <laughs> now, to be fair, like, there isn't a lot of reason to start a new game in the sense mm-hmm. that, like, you can Because it lets you jump from you classes. Jump from classes, all classes, you can change the pawns look top yeah. to bottom. You can do whatever the yeah. hell you want. Um, and your look, and yeah. I do hope that there's a new game plus. Um, maybe that's not there right now, but there was, the new game plus was. I don't think anyone's gonna need it for a while. <laughs> no, <laughs> a big game. Not. But new game plus on the first ga- first game, like there were different things. There were new quests you could only get then. Yeah. Uh, items you could only get then. You could pick up an eternal fairy stone, so you could fast travel f- forever. It never ran out. That was great. Yeah. Uh, they added like the eternal dungeon and the dark arisen expansion, where you could just go down in this big shaft and like fight things forever. Um, almost like almost uh roguelike style but not quite yeah um but like i'm, I'm i haven't even seen half the map on this thing I, oh maybe, the maybe... game is gigantic and look to be clear i'm not saying that it's a poorly crafted or a bad game it's just not for me mm-hmm. like i totally while i was playing it i could knew that you were gonna love it and i know that there's certain players who absolutely love it and again just because i don't like it i'm not saying that like it's janky or it's busted or it's broken I just, to me, I just don't want to, I felt like I was wasting my time playing the game, and I had a bunch of other stuff mm-hmm. I needed to do, and I was like, if I'm prioritizing my time right now, this is way low down the totem pole for me, and I just didn't want to play it anymore. I mean, that's just a shame, because the, the amount of weird, emergent, crazy shit that happens in this thing is I got a like taste of it. Else. Yeah, I got a little bit of a taste of it. Like, and the one thing I would say, too, about this game is at night... It becomes way more difficult. Oh yeah, night is like some games. Real... It's like oh, they add ten hit points to the enemies at night. In this, it's a big difference. Oh yeah, big yeah. deal. You and can like, be caught out like in caught out like th- different things are different. Things are more vicious at night. Things come out that aren't normally out there at night. Yeah. And the other thing, and this was true of the first game too, it's dark at night. It gets, oh, it I can't really see is, shit. You can't see shit. It drove me crazy, man. But Even like the... with my like OLED, which usually handles blacks like very well. I was like, all right, I'm going into settings and I'm turning up the brightness. Like, and I, I would mean, recommend I the, when you set it up the first time, turn up the brightness a little higher than you think you should. No, I have the brightness turn. I think was, I think it goes to 20, and I have it on 17. Yeah, that's very unusual. I mean, Me it's too. a dark, I never it's do a that. dark game in general. I mean, yeah. and I'm I'm not blowing out the bright because they show the bright and the dark picture. Yeah, I'm not blowing out the bright picture when yeah, I do yeah. that at all. Yeah. It's literally like that's the point at which I can start to see details on the wall in the dark picture. Yeah, that's what you want, yeah. and it feels about right. Yeah. But like, yeah, you got to turn that lantern on as soon as oh, soon as you sure. get in a cave, or as soon as you get. And I love that. Like that's great. Yeah. And like the, one of the worst things that happened was we were fighting lizards in a cave, and we and we fell off. I like, kind of we slid down this thing, and we landed in water, and all our lanterns went out because uh, we were in water. Yeah, yeah. And and, there, and if the and there's stuff like that. Luckily, on fire and like. In, so in the first yeah. game, if your lantern got wet, it wouldn't light again for like minutes. Mm-hmm. And in this one, that's not true. You just can light as soon as you get out of the water, you can light, light it, it up again. But for a second there everything went pitch black and You're you like, could just still hear the, w- hear the lizards <laughs> and i'm like everybody get out of the fucking water you idiots like, <laughs> that's funny it's just, You're right though that's the kind of emergent stuff that happens in yeah. this. and even in the time that i played it i saw a bunch of stuff like that so i think generally you probably have a pretty good idea whether this game is for you or not i'm guessing some of you guys have been playing it so i want to check in and see what you guys are saying about it um what do you think i was shocked to see 228 I guess that's, say, that's con- saying concurrent. Concurrent, concurrent users, yeah. 228k concurrence for this game. Yeah. That's a lot, man. For a not a multiplayer game, that's huge. Um, Evil Only 5. That's another weird thing. There's Denuvo in this. Why is there cheat protection on a single player game? I don't know. It's so man. weird. And also, it's not working because I've seen pawns at like level 9999. Nine, nine, nine. It's not. Dragon's Dogma 2, aka Pawn Stars from Evil Only 5. <laughs> Um, Pharaoh Dahl says the funniest complaint I saw for this is some guy said that he played this on his PC in his Steam Deck and it counted mm. them as separate PCs and triggered tamper protection. Yep. Ah, yep. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, people agreeing with you on the microtransaction stuff. Yeah, completely pointless. Yeah. Um, uh, Age of the Legends. So Shane, would you beat Elden Ring or Dragon's Dogma Two <laughs> face to beat one of the definitely Dragon's Dogma yeah, Two? Definitely Dragon's Dogma. It's way Dragon's it's way easier, guys. Way like, forgiving. Yeah, it's way easier. Like I said, like I didn't feel any resistance, which is why I didn't go farm to get that extra five hundred gold to save at the end. Because I was like, oh, I'm good. Like I just walked through all this stuff. I didn't even come close to dying. I'm like, surely if I'm conscientious of it, I'll easily make it. And I did. Like I'm easily made it 
to the next one, mm-hmm. and then the bridge collapsed, and I'm just like, what the hell? Like that is, in fact, I mean, there's always something happening in that area, so God knows. What I have no that idea what caused fall. it to happen, but again, that's um, an emergent thing that happened. Yeah. It just totally screwed and it, me. And they will be rebuilt in a few days. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. They'll, they'll come back, but like, yeah, yeah, like that's the thing that can happen. So sometimes it's to the good, sometimes it's to the bad. I got burned. Matt saw some cool stuff. To be fair, I saw some cool stuff too. So it wasn't all bad. Looks very nice. I mean, it yeah. needs need some updates. It's not, it's not amazing. The, the combat mostly feels good. Yeah, it's better. I, I did. I, pl- I played as the fighter early on, and I switched pretty quick because, like, it's it's still very hard to play a fighter in this game because, A, you don't get to do cool shit on well, the level you of the others. a hack and, and then a stab. Half and a stab, but you get, like, <laughs> the various skills and stuff, and there's stuff yeah. you can do. But the problem was, like, meanwhile, the mages are, like, sh- you know, burning oh, hands. Yeah. Fire- and I'm like, like I can't fucking see anything. Fireballs out of both hands. And I'm like, wait, I want to do that. Well, it's not that. I can't see anything. <laughs> right. Like, I'm yeah. trying to hit this guy, and it's just, like, oh, it does lightning get everywhere. And I'm just like, okay. If you have, like, three pawns with you, it can get real hectic. It's always better. Uh, to me, it's always better to just give the let, let a pawn be the fighter. Mm-hmm. And you stand back as a ranger or a, or a ranger or a uh, support or mage. And I thief. I haven't played as a thief yet. Thief. Thief seems like a fun class, but like it's not. It's not my re- my thing usually. Mm-hmm. Like the speedy backstabber. I don't deal. I don't. I don't fuck with that. Um, but I'm enjoying the mage a lot. I enjoyed the ranger and the little bit I played of it. But I just put, switched to the mage because the mage just seems way more powerful. Like yeah. And like I've just switched to sorcerer uh, in the last like hour or two of, the, of playing the game because I maxed out the mage. Mm-hmm. And now I get to bring all my mage augments into the sorcerer. Yeah, so you level up your character and you level up your class, basically. Yeah. As you go. Your character is separate, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the the encumbrance problem, which is very familiar to Dragon Zaba, that you don't actually level up your encumbrance very I think every 10 levels you get like three more kilograms. Yeah. In but you find these glowing gold beetles everywhere. And every time you find one, if you use it, it gives you another 0.15 kilograms you can carry. <laughs> And you also use them on your pawn. You also use them on your pawn if you don't right. have your pawn carry stuff. Uh, I use them on me. I use my pawns <laughs> yeah. as mules for the most part. Oh yeah, and they ask for you to do that. Like, yeah, the, pawn, yeah. the pawns are so hilariously subservient sometimes. Uh-huh. Although every once in a while you get one that's got attitude. Yeah. One of, one of the <laughs> one of the um, tells that they are infected by that dragon fever is they start being really rude to you, mm. uh, which is funny. It's time to get rid of them. But uh, yeah, <laughs> they start cracking much. jokes. And, the, and the other pawns will be like, road. what the hell is wrong with this guy? Like They'll, they'll comment. On, the commentary is very funny. It's, it's less repetitive than the first one where like, as soon as you leave town, it's like, it's like wolves hunting packs. Shut up. <laughs> oh my God. But like, uh, yeah. but I like several, the, the pawns, if a pawn has been through a quest before, whether they're either their own player or another player, and then they're saved, and you get them, they will know how to complete that quest. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of times they want to guide you there. And if they, if they say something like, oh, I know there's a chest here. I know how to do this. You can hit go, which is up on the D-pad. And they'll get a little hand next to them. And they'll, yeah. they'll guide you wherever you're going. If you get sidetracked or do something else or change your mind, they will like wave at you. And eventually they'll be like, that's not the direction we go to get to where we're going. And I'm like, that's cool. I got to do this. And they're like, well, I guess if you want to do something else, we will just, I will have to guide you to where we're going later. And I'm just like, <laughs> all right, you passive aggressive little shit. Like, I don't, like, like I am the Arisen yeah. and we're going this way. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. A little bit of that. Like, again, I was caught off guard a bunch of times by the pawns. Yeah. Pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh, okay. Like, you can oh, and I love that. Definitely the, buffed from at the, the end game. of the battle. Sometimes, like they'll hold their hand out, and if you go do a, them, high five. Do a high five, yeah, if you have the, if, like you have a flawless yeah. battle or whatever, or sometimes if you have a battle, and as soon as it ends, you level up, then yeah. they'll do like they're the like, all right, yeah, yeah. They'll do, like fist bumps and stuff. Yeah, it's 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 got a lot of personality in a way that the first one just didn't. Yeah, and where you you wouldn't expect it. Yeah, like I was again, I was caught off guard by this game a bunch of times. So there you go. That's Dragon's Dogma Two, PC, PS Five, Xbox Series. Um, I would recommend it for a certain type of player. Matt, you would recommend it for anyone who, yeah. who likes like open world emergent stuff and is not afraid to uh, be challenged, but not challenged in the sense that you're going to lose all your yeah. Your it doesn't gold send you to the, the depths of despair no. like the from software games can sometimes. No, just I guess watch out for bridges. Yeah, and I didn't. I wish I had. But what do you do? <laughs> you just I mean, there's no way to the pre- there's no way to tell that a bridge is about to <laughs> no. collapse. I don't. Th- I, no. mean, I don't know if if there is. I don't know about it. Yeah. I've never seen that big one fall. It could have been the coolest thing ever if like the enemies had walked onto the bridge and I'm oh, standing yeah. there looking at them and it collapses on them. Oh yeah, I've done then that. Then I'd before. be here going like, this is the most awesome game ever. I very specifically did that on. <laughs> it was a smaller bridge, but a, yeah. it was a ton of uh, bandits were running across, and I didn't feel like fighting them, so I just cut the bridge and they all oh. fell into the ravine. Interesting. 
Um, but then I kind of regretted it because I was like, I could see that some of them were glowing white, and I was uh-huh. like, oh, that means they have items. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> so I, I I went to the side, I found my way all the way oh, down into the ravine and got them and got all their <laughs> items and then went back up. That's funny. There's always another way back up. Yeah. Pretty usually pretty yeah. close, yeah. unless it's like uh, like well, you fell in like the actual river into the water, which yeah. is gonna give you the tentacle monster. Yep. Um, that, no yeah. swimming, obviously. We mentioned no, already. no swimming. Maybe that for would, the third one, they'll have swimming. Yeah, that'll be the that'll be the big ones. Dragon's Dogma three swimming. With lessons. swimming, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's Dragon's Dogma two. Next up, we're going to talk about a game. I don't even know if this game is out yet. South Park Snow Day. I don't know. Maybe it came out today. I think. Maybe I. I don't, I've not played it, and I will never play it. And I can tell you that you should definitely not play it because it, it I pl- appeared it appeared that way to me as well. <laughs> I played it all weekend long, and uh, it leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, South Park Snow Day is a, and I didn't know this until I started playing it. Matt is a roguelite, believe it or not. It is a Left for Dead slash roguelite. Hmm. Where you and three other characters, and they'll fill in like CPU bots if you don't have people to play with, but you and three other players play from checkpoint to checkpoint through South Park. So you see in the plot here, it's a snow day, everybody's off school, all the kids go out into the neighborhood to play in the snow, and they let their imaginations take over. And they have this imaginary war, basically, between each other. And basically what you're doing is you're trying to fight from one side of South Park to the other side of South Park along the way. The boss fights you fight are some of the biggest characters from the franchise. Um, Some of the more legendary characters from the franchise's past. One thing I will say, Matt, just generally about South Park, is what I've discovered is I just really don't care anymore about this IP. And I don't know if anybody does anymore. It really feels like it has just completely lost steam. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I haven't watched it's an episode the same, of South Park in forever. Me either, but it's, they're still telling I can the still same quote, jokes. I can still quote you some of the lines from the ones from 30 years ago or 20 years ago. And Matt, you'll hear them in this game. I'm sure. Like, it feels like this thing had just got is stuck at, like, 2003 or I something. I think some of that's just because they know the target audience for this are people who just remember South Park from around that time. They're like us, and they've stopped yeah. watching, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I would just say this. Like, I didn't laugh at this game, like, at all. Like, I don't even remember one time where I even, like, chuckled at something in this. Like, it's all the same, like... <laughs> of, course of course you're getting this, Eric Cartman is. What? I mean, he says, I'm get, yeah, he's, oh, he's going to buy it, he's saying? Yeah. Well, wait until you hear my his, impressions of his it. His name is Eric Cartman is. Of course oh. he's getting it. <laughs> I did not Fans connect Fans buy the things that other people don't buy. As, yeah. star, as a Star Wars fan, I have a lot of games that I probably shouldn't have paid money for, but here we are. I think he should still listen to me before he pays for this game. At least I hope you do. Give me 15 minutes, man, before you pull the trigger on buying it. Just give me that. Um... So anyway, basically, it's just a Left 4 Dead game set in the South Park universe, except it's not shooting. It's mostly melee driven. And there I was is, expecting more snowballs, I guess. Honestly, there's like no snowballs in it. There's no snowball fighting in this hardly at all. That's the weirdest part about it. Like, most of it is melee. So basically how it works is you start a session, you go to a war table where... You know, Cartman's sitting there because he's he's the wizard or whatever. You choose your mission from the war table, and it's linear. So, like, you can... You generally need to play through it in order. Now, when you go to matchmake, you can choose to turn off spoiler defense, basically. So you can jump in and play anywhere that you want to. So you can jump ahead and play levels that you haven't yet. But generally, you're going to have to play through it, like in sequential order from from how the game lays it out for you so you choose your mission you choose your difficulty then you go to this next stand where you choose your loadout and at the loadout you basically have um, four things that you need to select you choose two weapons to take into battle and then you choose essentially two spells to take into battle and then you go into a little teleport area and it teleports you off to the battle arena and essentially all you're doing is you're fighting from point a to point b against some of south parks and i say some because there aren't enough but some of South Park's characters. Most of the people that you're fighting in this game are little kids. So they're saying things like, in a kid's voice, like, you cut me. I'm bleeding. (laughs) Like, that's the... Well, you laughed at it. Okay, I did not. (laughs) That's the humor in this game, though. Mm. That's pretty much the only angle that they take in this, is like, hey, we're going to make little kids... And I literally think they brought little kids into their freaking VO studio to say this shit. 
We were going to bring in a bunch. I've never known them to use actual kids. Oh, really? No. They sound like kids. They're very good, you can they're tell, very good voice actors. You can kind of tell the ones that are adults trying to sound like kids, and then there are some that sound like freaking kids. Um, I mean, there's a whole cadre of voice actors that just specialize in that. That's true. It, they well, they're really good. Then, if they are not kids, they're really flipping good. They definitely. I mean, you bring kids me. in, even for VO, you bring kids in. You got to have teachers on. Right. All this. I mean, like this is so much more expensive. You're right. It having, does add a lot. And just production. having a 20 year old woman come in and like pitch your voice up a couple octaves. Yeah. So. Yep. Well, it's in, like any game as a service, and this is ultimately a game as a service. There's tons of cosmetics that you unlock with. Yeah, like, Ike is voiced by an actual baby back in the original episode. It was voiced it, by it a baby. It was one of their kids. One of oh, their babies. Interesting. Um, so there's three different currencies that you collect. There's dark matter. There's PP, which you use to buy like your cosmetics, which ultimately is why it's a game as a service. And then there's TP, which is toilet paper. Toilet paper is the main currency in the game. Anytime you kill an enemy or you bust open a trash can or whatever, rolls of toilet paper come flowing out. And the reason those are important are because that's where the roguelite elements come from. So mid-mission, that dude right there, what's his name? The guy that stutters. Oh, um, I don't remember I don't his name. Remember. But anyway, he is the guy who mid-mission you talk to and you get upgrades from him. So J- Jimmy? Jimmy, yeah. yeah. So the whole game is driven by cards. When you first select your abilities at the beginning, they're cards, and all the stuff that you select later on are cards. So I'm going to pause the B-roll here so I can explain this. So you get about like midway. Or actually, there's probably like three checkpoints per mission. But actually, after you get like through one of the first gauntlet and you get to Jimmy... He presents you with three different cards that you can choose from, and these all improve your abilities. But here's the catch. You can also use the toilet paper that you've collected to boost the power of that card and make it more rare. So there's a rare card there. I can spend TP to boost that up to ultra rare, whatever the next class is, which will make it more powerful. And a big part of the game is figuring out how to intelligently spend your TP to have the ultimate build by the time you get to the end. Now, I will say this. By the time you get to an end of one of these levels, you are a, an ass kicker. Like, you can definitely feel a huge difference between how you start each run and who you are as a character by the time you get to the end of the run. Because not only do you get, like, those mid-checkpoints where Jimmy gives you a new card, you can also find chests hidden out in the environments that will also give you a new card. So mm-hmm. by the time you actually finish a run, you end up with, like, 10 or 11 cards or something like that. And you can definitely feel the difference. Now... I said earlier, it's a melee game. There's only like three melee weapons. There's like dual daggers. There's a sword and shield. And then there's a pole. But honestly, playing with each one of those really doesn't make any difference. Even the spells. Like you you can also choose projectiles. So you can get a bow and arrow. But the aiming with the bow is like awful and busted. And there's not really an auto aim on it. Until you upgrade it with one of Jimmy's cards that gives you like a, a spread shot or whatever. And then it has a homing where you don't have to actually aim it. But trying to aim spells or bows and arrows in this is annoying AF. The spells, they all, pretty much all the projectiles have charge ups. So some of your spells, like say you have a fireball spell. If you actually hold, instead of just tapping it and throwing one fireball at a time, if you hold it, it will basically create a, an area of effect on the ground and then you can drop it and they'll just take out like hordes of enemies at once there are other elements of the game too where they teach you how to do um like combos for example one of the cards that you can get gives you this ability to throw like a smart bomb and you throw the bomb and it sucks all the enemies into it and then spins them around like a tornado if you do that while they're spinning around and you shoot them with arrows while they're spinning around it creates this crazy duplicity effect that like triples the damage or whatever of the the, su- the sucking grenade. So there are cards that you can get in this that teach you to do combos and become better at the game. But again, ultimately it comes down to melee. And the problem with this game is that all the characters are a foot tall. So when you go to melee, it's just all these little basically like weeble wobbles rolling around each other. You can't tell what the hell's going on. Hmm. It's just total madness. Um, and again, the melee in this is so much more powerful. And this is what I was talking about beforehand. Well, I don't want to rewind it too much. But this is what this is where you're actually starting to set it up. So there's the armory that you go to. And here you can see where you actually start choosing. So you get to, to choose two weapons and two powers for each, each run that you go on. And again, as you go through the run, you get more. You get new cards and things like that. Here you can see those are all the weapons you get. So there's only like six total. Um, but you have to choose from one of each row. So you can get one melee weapon and then one projectile. Um, 
and then you go to the power section, and those are more fun. Like as I fin as I started wrapping up my time playing this, I got a turret. And that changed everything. It's like this big turret that you can sit on the ground that just tosses snowballs at enemies. And it made the game like a walk in the park. But it's like one of the last things that you end up unlocking in the game. Overall, though, I would just say that like none of it is like South Park enough. Like nothing is over the top enough. Like there were no moments where I got like some new weapon or some new power up. And I was like, hot damn, this is awesome. Like it just all kind of feels very samey. And it also looks very samey. Like... I understand the concept is it's a snow day, but unfortunately it makes every run look and play like almost identical. It's just all white and gray because everything's covered in snow throughout the entire game. Now, there are some clever things that they do with it eventually. Like I think the second chapter, they present you with like this hub world with, with a big lake that's like frozen over and there's like a bus that's sitting on top and you have to go out and complete missions and come back and put gas in the truck and come back and like I, what i can't remember what the other thing is but you have to gather these two things for the bus once you do that the bus will start it will drive onto the ice it will break and then the ice falls through and you realize that there are people trapped under the ice so there are some parts where it feels a little bit more like a typical like action adventure game instead of a game as a service but unfortunately, it doesn't hold true throughout the entire uh, length of it. Now, runs are different. Like, they do come up with different concepts. Like, one of them, you fight um, up through, like, a skyscraper. There's another one where you have to stay off the streets. Stan has, like, a sniper rifle. And so you're fighting across town, but you have to stay on the rooftops. Um, so there's kind of themes for each of the stages or whatever to kind of give them a somewhat of a unique spin. But as you see through this B-roll, it all looks the same. It's just South Park covered in snow. And it's cool for the first couple of chapters. After a while, it starts to burn out. And as you know, these games are designed to play them over and over and over and over again as you collect more TP and you collect more of the dark matter and more of the PP so that you can buy cosmetics and blah, blah, blah. Um, the dark matter that you collect in this game goes to a skill tree, which I didn't even realize was there for the first like five hours I played this game. I discovered it in a menu and I was like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, oh, that's what the dark matter is for. And so there's a skill tree that you can use. It's just one big tree that you can spend your dark matter in to uh, increase your abilities. And that actually did make a big difference. I had been playing without it, and I was kind of struggling. As soon as I went into that skill tree and, and started assigning all my dark matter points, then I started walking through the game. So this game is 30 bucks. That's one thing I will say. Like, it's kind of priced right. So Eric Cartmenez, the one thing I would say is you're not going to chuck out a lot of money to show your fealty to South Park. It's not going to cost you a bunch. Um, but I played this for, I don't know, probably 15 hours, something like that. And I was mostly through the game at that point. Like, I had completed pretty much all the missions. Um, the matchmaking and everything works great. It's really fast. There's no problem getting games. There's plenty of people playing the game. I don't know how long that'll last, but right now there's tons of people playing. Um, no matter which difficulty you set it on, I managed to find people to play with as well. Um, so all that was good. But just overall, it was just kind of frustrating to play the game in a lot of cases. And again, because of the art style, things just start blending together. It's hard to follow what's happening. I even found myself like attacking my teammates a lot of the time because they just all start blurring together with all the little enemies because they're all the same height. They all basically look the same. It can be difficult to figure out the enemies in this. Um, there you can see, like, I threw down, like, a little pole, and, like, if you stand next to it, it'll heal you. Now I'm dead. You gotta wait to be revived. I'm reviving in this. You just basically walk next to and to one of your teammates, and it, there's, like, a ring around them, and if the ring fills up once it's full, they will be revived, and they can they're, they come back to life. Um, I will say this. Once everybody dies, you start the whole run over, and these runs are long, man. Like, each one of these chapters probably takes two hours to get through. From start to finish mm -hmm. and if everybody dies you start over from the beginning again and that can be a little rough so um the other thing i would say too about this there aren't team like attacks and team mechanics like you don't team up with like the other people in the game to do like crazy over the top specials or supers or anything like that you do have your own super you can see in the bottom right there they're called bullshit hmm. and <laughs> Just for fun, I decided to grab the sound effect that, that happens whenever you get bullshit. And here it is. Bullshit. Last night, 
the game glitched and it just kept screaming bullshit over and over and over again. <laughs> it's the only uh, glitch that I've come across playing this game. And it just like somebody fired off their special and it just kept yelling bullshit over and over and over again. Um, but the specials, the way they're managed are you get X number of specials per round, depending on the special. So the more powerful ones, you only get two uses. The weaker ones, you'll get three or four uses. However, at the midpoints where you meet with Jimmy, some of the cards that he offers you will replenish your supers. So if you have a super that you really like or is really effective against a certain type of enemy that's in that stage, then it might be worthwhile to use one of Jimmy's cards to reimburse, basically, the specials that you've used. But that's pretty much it. That's the the totality of South Park um, Snow Day. It's available for PC, PS5, Xbox Series, and Switch but not last-gen PS4 and Xbox One, which is a little odd. Maybe it'll come there eventually. But ultimately, I would only recommend this to somebody who has a username like Eric Cartman. As like, Otherwise, I, was, I would stay away from this. I found it frustrating to play. I didn't find it funny. Um, I, just, I don't know if I just don't care about South Park anymore. I used to love it. But it just feels like they're still telling the same jokes from like 20 years ago, and I just don't find them funny anymore. So... Um, Ultimately, I was kind of surprised that the IP didn't do much for me with this game at all. Like, I didn't find it very funny or... It always seemed like a weird match. Yeah. Like, like this gameplay plus that. So, I don't know. I would have preferred another Ubisoft RPG. Yeah, another, I mean, I don't know that I, I want another one of those. Make, I mean, they kind of ran out of ideas for those, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know where the, where South Park goes with video games now, honestly. Like, maybe you I mean, make I just would, a... I would encourage a way. <laughs> Or maybe you make like an open world action adventure or something like Simpsons Hit and Run or something. Like I could maybe play something like that and enjoy it. But the problem is this leans almost entirely on the South Park aesthetic. And it's not something that I think I really enjoy anymore. And so that was a big problem for me enjoying this game. And the other stuff that I mentioned too, it doesn't help things. Um, the, the lack of humor though to me was maybe the most glaring thing about this game like i thought you know it it wouldn't be a great game or it might be a mediocre game but i thought it would have me laughing like the whole way through but like i don't know maybe fart jokes just don't make me laugh anymore matt i don't know (laughs) because that's pretty much what this entire game is is one big fart joke like one of the abilities you get is like a fart blast off like you blast off and like anybody standing around you gets intoxicated by the gas and they're stunned for a while i think some of it's just like part of the appeal of south park when it started was that they were doing these things on TV, like nobody would do it. No. Then, like yeah. their Christmas special was a talking piece of poo that, like, yeah. like, and it's just like everybody does that now. And right? There, there I had that no... epiphany. There's a moment in this where what's the talking <laughs> piece of poo's name? Mr. Hanky. Mr. Hanky. There's a whole Christmas poo. Yeah, you there's... mean Mr. Hanky? <laughs> yes. Uh oh. Like, yeah. That's there's I'm a whole here. mission are built around him, and it, at the end of it, he does this long extended dialogue where literally the other thing I would say too about this is like. The art style is inconsistent. So you have the characters from the show that are flatly shaded like cartoon characters in this polygonal 3D world. And nowhere did that stand out more than when Mr. Hanky was delivering his diatribe because he's literally just a sprite plastered on the screen with a bunch of 3D snow behind him and it just sat there. And I'm like (laughs) looking at it and I'm like, then I had the epiphany. I was like, back when this stuff started, this was the only show that would have a talking turd. Mm-hmm. And it blew us away. We're like, oh my God, they can do this on TV. They can do this in cartoons. That's insane. And you're right. Like, for example, when I was recovering from COVID, I finally watched the second half of the first season of Invincible. And mm-hmm. holy shit, the second half of that season is insane. Mm-hmm. And it makes South Park look tame in comparison it really does oh where do you see where that's going i can't even imagine no it was great cannot. it really was great it's that great. first the scene of, Invin- of invincible was really good i encourage anyone who likes the invincible cartoon so far just go get the comic yeah read the comic it's a it's a very accurate uh, adaptation uh but you can read the whole thing's done you can read the whole thing right now and not wait seven eight years for amazon to get around to animating the whole thing yeah what I would say, though, is I would only recommend this game to huge fans of South Park. Um, and even, again, even then, even then, it's a tough sell because I like South Park or I have liked it. I don't know if I do like it anymore, though, now, Matt. 
Honestly, do I still I like South Park? I don't, I don't really have an opinion. I don't know if I do. <laughs> I used I, to really I like appreciate it. that Trey and Matt basically try to get the show canceled every year so they don't have to do it anymore, <laughs> but they, it was comedy, they just won't do it. It just yeah. won't happen. But... Well, because it feels a lot of airtime. Um, but even as someone who was at one time, I thought, a huge fan of South Park, like I struggled to keep playing this game because the mechanics just aren't good enough. The game itself isn't good enough to overcome any license, in all honesty. Um, so again... I would recommend so this a little more, uh, a little more of uh, the N64 game and less of the stick of truth. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, because that Cause that is, wasn't very good. No, either. it wasn't either. Ow. It was just like, hey, we got this license. What we don't know what to do with it, but we'll probably still make money off of this game. Let's put it out. This game has a little bit of that. Um, if you're a fan of roguelites, would I recommend this? Probably not. I would say that you do feel far more powerful as you get to the end of each run. Like you can feel the roguelite part of it in the game um but this isn't one of the better examples of a roguelike i would just recommend playing like hades again or something um so there you go that's south park snow day you have any questions about it matt nope no let's just check chat really quickly just to make sure you guys don't have any questions for me about this um vincent asks would it be worth playing when it arrives on playstation plus in nine months sure i mean if the game's free why not give it a go like you may find that you do like it or maybe you still find south park funny i don't but um, maybe you guys do. Um, Silk Snake, would it be possible to get for a weekend just to do the story gameplay and sell it? Yes. Yeah. So that's exactly what I did, uh, Silk Snake. I played it this weekend. I had it from Friday until today, and I played it off and on all weekend long, and um, I was done with it yesterday. So that's exactly what happened. I got it on Friday. I finished playing it last night, and I was good to go. So yeah. And again, it is only 30 bucks. So Eric Cartman is uh, still buying it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, and Zet Saber Juno says, no yellow snow. There were no yellow snow jokes that I came across, actually, now that I think about it. So maybe mm. they did show some restraint, Matt. <laughs> um, not, every, not every joke is eternal, I suppose. Zet Saber says, TP as currency might become legit in real life. And that's exactly what this was. It was a joke or a gag at COVID, which are we past that now, Matt? Are we kind of past, like, making jokes about, like, empty store shelves and fighting people for toilet paper? Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. Hopefully not another hundred years till it happens again. Um, but, yeah, that is what they're going for with this. I don't know if this game was supposed to come out sooner than it did, but it feels a little like a day late and a dollar short at mm -hmm. this point, trying to make jokes about fighting over toilet paper. And there's, like, so when I was talking earlier about how, like, you go through the whole thing with the bus, and then the bus crashes down through the ice... Like, when, when you go down there, you realize that there was somebody who had gone down there to try to get toilet paper, and it got trapped. So it is a running gag throughout the entire game that, you know, people, there's no toilet paper, and people need it, and blah, blah, blah. So there you go. That's South Park Snow Day. Again, it's available for PC, PS5, Xbox Series, and Switch. And I only recommend it to the highest of the high South Park fans. Next up. We're going to talk briefly about a game that we talked about in last week's show, only because I went back and played it and actually finished it, and that is Princess Peach Showtime for Nintendo Switch. Um, I went and played this. Once I, <laughs> once I quit Dragon's Dogma 2, I was like, all right, I need to play something. I'm like, all right, I have the final version of uh, Princess Peach that Nintendo sent me. I'll give it a go. And so I did go and play pretty much the entirety of of Princess Peach Showtime. Now, I'll say this. I'm not going to repeat a lot of the things I said about it in the last time we talked about it. I only want to talk about stuff that I discovered brand new um, because you can obviously just go back and watch the last episode if you want, like, all the nitty-gritty details about it. But the one thing I will say is I had assumed that the game was really short um, based upon the demo that I played because I was like, okay, it took me an hour to finish this whole floor, and there's I'm guessing there's three or... No, this game is way longer than I thought, Matt. And for maybe the first time in my entire life with a video game, that's not a good thing. Hmm. Because what you discover is when you go back and you play some of these sort of mini games or whatever for the second time, is that, that they're just vapid trash. <laughs> like, they just, they don't hold up. There's no nuance to them. There's no real skill involved with them. It's more about like, oh, I remember now that this thing is over here. Or I remember now that, mm -hmm. oh, this is a little tricky part of this that I didn't get the gem last time. Now I'll remember to get the gem. So unfortunately for Princess Peach Showtime, the more time you spend with it, the more the faults and the flaws start to come through. It is the epitome of the style over substance video game. 
And I will say this, Matt. I feel like we don't get enough of them anymore. Um, there is a certain point when you're playing this game where you just kind of just have to let go and just let the game just kind of wash over you. Because I, I found myself fighting it for a while. I'm like, oh, like, now that I've played, like, Cowgirl Peach for the second time, I don't like playing as Cowgirl Peach now. Like, I, I don't know. I, this, this game, for me, is one of the hardest ones I've had to evaluate for a really, really long time. Because there's moments where you're like, wow, like, this game is way better than I thought it was going to be. And then there are moments where you're like, oh, this is exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, the one thing I will say is I did get to play eventually with all her transformations. And I did find some that I thought were pretty cool. Like, uh, the Ninja Peach is pretty cool. Like, I mentioned a little bit last week, the last, the last episode, about how she had, like, these cool, like, stealth things where she would, like, put up little things up over her mm. face when she was in the grass, and she had, like, a pole that she could use to go underwater. That ended up being one of the best transformations in the game. There's also... So, basically, how it works is for each transformation or form of Peach, there's two things that you do in that stage, usually. And so for the second thing, for the Ninja Peach, there were auto-run sections where you're just right. running and platforming. And those were actually pretty fun and cool. Um, the Cowgirl Peach, as I said, the second time I played with her, I didn't enjoy it as much. But she has like a roping mini game, And then she has sections like the, like the video game Stampede for the Atari 2600. So those are the two there. Um, then there's Dashing Thief Peach. And she has like a grapple hook and then these drones that follow her around that you can latch onto with the grapple hook. That was one of the more fulfilling um, transformations that I found. And then Mermaid Peach is like a Disney animated film brought to life where she swims in the water and directs schools of fish with like the other analog stick. It's almost like left brain, mm -hmm. right brain things where you're controlling schools of fish to like solve puzzles and basically trigger things to help you move forward. So those are kind of the ones that I enjoyed the most. Um, the objective of the game is to purify each floor of the theater. I talked about that last time. But the game isn't linear. Once you unlock a new floor, all of those stages are open to play. And you can choose to play them in whatever order you want to. And eventually, you'll find that there's some that you like and some that you don't. And you'll start playing the ones that you like first and not playing the ones that you don't like. Um, so what controls whether you unlock a floor is as you play through each stage, there's these gems that you collect. Um, and I think there's like 10 or 12 on each stage. And, you you know, if you're an older player, that's where the challenge comes in. Like, the game never gets harder. It becomes harder to get all the gems and to find the bow. That's where they ramp up the difficulty. So the kids will be able to get through the stage and probably complete it. But they're probably going to complete it as it gets further into the game with just a few gems. But the good news is the gems are what unlock each floor and you're never not going to have enough gems. Like, the first floor I had to unlock required 10 gems. I had, like, 40. Mm -hmm. The second one needed 15, and I had, like, 60. So it's it's a very gentle game. Now I played. I did play some of this. Did you? Um, and, yeah, Ninja Peach was kind of kind of the, the pinnacle of yeah. it so far. Uh, there, there is an element of kind of a baby game for babies yeah uh, a little bit not in a bad way it's it's got charm and and some verve to it yep but um yeah it didn't it did not hold my attention tremendously long uh although it is again the animation is very nice the it visuals is. are very nice kind of in the in the luigi's mansion 3 vein of like wow they really they really figured out exactly where to put the the, the put the pawn on the uh the switch's power level yeah with these, with these games yep um, and one thing I would say, too, is the further I got into the game, the cooler the stage stuff got as far as, like, selling it. So eventually, like, you get, like, a horse that you can ride as Cowboy Peach, and, like, he's on a string, like a puppet. And, like, it's all animated. And you're chasing after all this stuff that's also puppets, and they're all animated, and they have their strings going, like... It's pretty cool. Like, again, like, if you're into plays and musicals and things like that, this is, like, your dream game. They treat all that stuff with, like, the utmost respect and, and a lot of care. Um, I, when you do go back and play as Cowgirl Peach for the second time or any of the transformations for a second time and you complete that stage, when you come out, it unlocks a special challenge stage that opens in the basement. So in the basement, there's all these special stages, but they don't unlock until you play for the second time as one of the transformations. And then you go down there, and there's like these special like challenge stages that are completely separate 
from the rest of the game. They do reuse assets and art from the stages that you've already played through, but they're completely reconfigured, and most times they have completely different objectives. So again, to what I was saying when I first started talking about this again, this game is way bigger than I thought it was going to be, and I don't think that is to the game's advantage that it's bigger. Like I feel like the more that I played it, the less I enjoyed it and, and the less in awe I was of it. Um, the other thing that's really annoying, and Matt, you probably picked up on this too, is how you just have to keep spamming the magical ribbon attack because you never know what is going to be affected by the ribbon magic in this. So you literally just have to run around the entire stage trying it on every object in the stage. And like after playing this for 90 minutes, my wife wanted to kill me and she loves Peach. She's like, oh my gosh, Peach game. I bought her the, the last Peach game like 20 some years ago in Japan. I bought her a Japanese uh, Game Boy and I bought her that Princess Peach game in Japan and she loved it. And she's like, oh my God, it's a Peach game. I'm like, it's the first Peach game since that one I bought you in Japan like 20 some years ago. And so she was kind of engaged with it until she wasn't. Until I had, you have to keep spamming, as you're saying right now, that ribbon thing, you have to do it over and over. And there's three different sound effects for the ribbon magic and you learn them very quickly and get sick of them very, very quickly. Um... The other thing, too, is that, like, as I said, this game is all flash over substance, so much so that there are times where the game will fire off a cutscene and the coins are sitting there and they disappear before you can get the coins because the cutscene hasn't finished yet. Hmm. I mean, it just shows you that the, the priorities in designing this game were built around, like, eh, does anyone really care if they don't get, if they get all the coins? I do. As an adult playing a game, I care that I get those coins. Will kids care? Probably not. So it's it's kind of a conflicting game. Again, it's been very difficult for me to evaluate this. And then, like, while I do like the art in a lot of ways, I also hate, the, like, the snowboard kids' big nose, like, art in this. Like, I have never liked it. It's just, like, Japanese thing for some reason. Like, a lot of, like, games and cartoons and manga and stuff use that art style. I hate it. <laughs> I don't know why it's become a thing, but it certainly makes it easy to create characters for a video game, that's for sure, if they're that simple. Um, I mean, to me, they look like tiny versions of the whatever the, the creatures were in uh, Sunshine. Yeah, and I hated them as well. <laughs> Did you? I don't like anything about that game. Yeah, really. yeah. You're right, though. They do look very similar to some of the characters in Mario Sunshine, for sure. It's weird that there's a whole civilization in the Mushroom Kingdom that just does plays. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little odd. Um, and, and the other thing, too, is that the game tries to make a big deal out of cosmetics. Like, literally, it's the only thing to drive you other than just unlocking a new stage to play through. It's the only, like, all the currency that you get in the game is just to unlock new dresses for Peach and, like, a new, like, ribbon, basically, for that weird creature that follows you around the whole game. Um, they push you to do it. I found, like, one thing I liked for both of them and didn't care again. So now I just have all these coins that I'll never spend on anything. Um, and they try to push it on you. I was I was not about it. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, I guess I would just say, overall, the game wears out of its welcome pretty quickly. As far as, like, should you buy this to play with your kids, like if your kids are into musicals and stuff like, or even like the stuff that Disney does, like Frozen and stuff like that, I think they'll really like this game. It has that same vibe, that same style, that same aesthetic to it as those Disney um, animated films do. Um, but otherwise, like it's a tough sell. And I would say too, like if you're like, oh, I'll play along with my kid, good luck. Like first couple hours are fine. After that, I really found myself struggling to keep playing. Um, but again, I'm an adult. And I don't think this game was made for adults. And I'm not 100% sure that it was made for adults to play with kids either, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I do think if you're an adult, you'll struggle a little bit to find all the gems because some of them, they just hide them in really kind of mean places just to guarantee you won't find it the first time. So you have to come back and find it the second time around. Uh, or And then there's one bow in each level that you can find. Like that might keep you engaged for a while, but it didn't work for me. So... Uh, this game is $60. I would not spend $60 on this game. We talk all the time about how Nintendo never really lowers the price of its games. Um, and so I don't see this one lowering in price anytime soon. Um, and so, yeah, I would stay away from it. I would not spend $60 on this game. I'd be happy spending maybe $30 or $40 on it. Um, it did take me like a whole day of playing solid to finish it. So it's probably eight hours long, I would guess, something like that, roughly. 
which is way longer than I thought. I thought it was going to be like three hours or something like that, having played the demo. So, yeah, I think this might be one where Nintendo just didn't quite hit that sweet spot where it's like kids will love it and adults will love it playing it with their kids. Like, I didn't feel like this game hit that mark. Like, Did a lot they ever of... admit who made it? Yeah, um, and now I've forgotten it already. Oh, I can't remember now, but they did. It, they they shared the studio that did it. It's like called Q Essence or some crap. I can't remember. Hmm. But um, anyway, that's Princess Peach Showtime. It's available for Switch. It's sixty dollars. I would not pay more than thirty or forty dollars for it though. Um, I just it was patchy. My enjoyment of the game was patchy. Like I'd enjoy one stage, then I play two that I didn't really like, like the the uh, pastry chef stuff. First time I played it, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. After that, it sucks. Like, I didn't enjoy playing it at all. So that was the one that really stands out for me as far as, like, the second time going back to play it. I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have enjoyed it the first time either. Uh, so anyway, it's just one of those games that's kind of up and down, up and down. And unfortunately, there's just more downs than there are ups for me. I do not recommend Princess Peach Showtime. And with that, it's time for... <laughs> What's up everyone, Shane here, and one thing you may not realize about me is that I am a total sneakerhead. That's right, I've been collecting Nike sneakers since the early 90s. My favorites are Air Max 95 and Air Max 97. Now, one thing that's different about me from your typical sneakerhead is that I actually wear the sneakers, and because of that, they can get dirty. And that is where New York Sneaker Society comes in. Using their advanced shoe cleaning products, I turned an old pair of Nikes that looked like this into this. With their cleaning products, your sneaker life can go from a year to five or more. I know that I have shoes that are like 30 years old that I still wear because I've cleaned them. You can also lower your carbon footprint, haha, by keeping your kicks looking fresh. For my daily drivers, I also appreciate New York Sneaker Society's Refresh Spray to keep them smelling great and staying crisp. Head to nysneakersociety.co slash sifted to clean your shoes like a pro at home and get 10% off your order. That's right, that's nysneakersociety.co slash sifted for 10% off. That's right, people. Everyone's interested in saving money right now. I think we're always interested in saving money. And I'm just telling you right now, you can buy one of those kits. I think one of the kits is even like $15. And that kit really has the essentials that you need to clean your shoes. Like the big kits will make your shoes shine. Like they'll make them look brand new. Even the $15 kits that they have there, it will totally revive an old pair of shoes that you spent a ton of money on years ago that you thought was left for dead. Now, it's very important that you use the URL with this sponsor, and that is nysneakersociety.co slash sifted. And it's very important that you use that because if you do, you will get 15% off of everything that you buy there. So if you buy in a, one of the bigger kits, that's a nice little chunk of change. Even if you buy one of the smaller kits, like the $15 jobs, um, it's still significant savings. So again, go to nysneakersociety.co slash sifted. Um, I guarantee you, if you use even that $15 kit that they have there, it will transform some of your old shoes into shoes that you will wear all over again like they were brand new. I've been wearing that pair of Air Max 97s that I brought back to life all the time now. And those shoes had sat in my closet for like 11 years. And now I wear them. Like I just bought them. So I know it, you may be sitting there like, why Why would I? Because you can save yourself so much money. Those shoes that you bought, you bought them because you liked them. You stopped wearing them because they started to look beat up. Go to nysneakersociety.co slash sifted. Get yourself a cleaning kit. Start wearing those shoes again instead of buying a new pair for a hundred plus dollars. And as a big part of our sponsorship, we do some fun stuff here with New York Sneaker Society. We have a sneaker of the week where we find a game that either had a new trailer or had a preview. Something happened for that game during the week where it either caught our attention or it caught your attention. A lot of this is based on, I go in, I look at the data in our admin and figure out what stuff you guys are really vibing with, and I find something that was really a riser for that week. And this week, that game is an adventure game called Indica. Matt, are you familiar with this game? No. This is a, an adventure game that, were, that follows a nun in Russia in the 19th century. And it is one of the most bizarre this by the way may be the most bizarre trailer that's been released in the last like three or four years for a video game 
But the game itself also is crazy. So it has insane religious undertones to it. If you're a religious person, you might want to stay away from this game because it does, I wouldn't say it objectifies religion, but it does lay bare maybe some of the hypocrisy of religion. This game got a crazy hard M rating. Like literally rated M for mature with every descriptor in the book after it. And it's like you look at the trailers of this, you watch gameplay of it, you never would guess that that's what this game is. Um, this is coming to pretty much everything. Again, it is a point and click adventure game. I know it sounds crazy. Really? I'm going to play a game that follows a nun in the 19th century Russia. Also the timing of this game, by the way. These guys are from Russia and had to flee Russia to finish this game. Hmm. So this is a little bit of the stalker thing going on here where you got some developers who were like, oh my God, we need to get the hell out of here before we get in trouble. Um, but again, this game is called Indica. It's coming to pretty much every platform. Um, and that is our New York Sneaker Society Sneaker of the Week for Game Face, episode 381. And with that, it's time to get on to our last topic of today's show. We don't have a ton of time to discuss this, unfortunately, Matt. Um, but here's the thing. So you played this weeks ago, mm -hmm. like three, four weeks ago. I just finally got a chance to play it this week. It's a game called Outcast, A New Beginning. It is a sequel to a game that's like 20 years old. Mm -hmm. The game from 20 years ago was crazy innovative. Mm -hmm. Open world, like one of the first open world games, like kind of nailed it even for its first attempt. Mm -hmm. This is the sequel, but it's also very similar. Like it starts the same guy, but he's come back now and it's like 20 years later or whatever. Basically the plot of the game is that he's looking for his lost daughter. He's which, trying to get back to Earth. Well, the ultimate goal, yeah. But yeah. he's trying to find his daughter and then get back to Earth. And then the rub here is that once he gets there, there's these indigenous people there who are under attack by this army of robots. And they're like, hey, help us against this robot invasion and we'll help you find your daughter and get back to Earth. And that's pretty much the plot of the game. Now, well, and also the the people running the robots are his people. They're humans. Yeah. yeah. Well, not just humans. They're people he knows. Right. But yeah. he doesn't remember why he knows them or why he isn't on their side or what Because his mind is wiped at the beginning of the yeah. game. Yeah, his memory is wiped. Um, and the, the plot of this game is not why you're going to play it. I'll just put it to you that way. The writing in this game is terrible. The voice acting in this bad is so bad that I thought it might be intentional. I don't know. I mean, the main guy is pretty good. He's good. Like, he's funny. Like, because the main guy kind of has that this is all stupid sort of. Any yeah. Joke. Like, all this is ridiculous. And he's yeah. continually using, almost intentionally using, like, weird idioms that the aliens don't understand. And he's like, nah, it's not, whatever. It's just, well, there's a dictionary know. in this. So the aliens talk. And if you don't use the dictionary translator in this, you can't understand what they're saying. And they go on forever and ever, yeah, they have man. A lot of, for whatever reason, you have a you have like a universal translator that tells you what they're saying, but it doesn't translate some particular words, normal words. Yeah. And so you have, there's a little glossary that you can hold the right trigger, and it brings up. Yeah. Little, it's, it runs it runs in real time too. It's like whatever they're saying currently, it'll pop up and it'll tell you what they are. And eventually, you learn what what they're talking about, but yeah. it's gonna be hard to care. Yep. Now, this game, you basically get just two weapons in this whole game, but it doesn't matter because you have these crazy augments that basically turn the guns into whatever the hell you want to. Now, yeah. here's the thing, though. The game is so damn easy that I never really needed to, like, use the crazy mods. Like, I could... I, I yeah, was I, walking through the game with the default pistol, basically. Default pistol's fine. Once you get, like, some... Once you get some mods on the machine gun, on the larger gun that turn it into right. a machine gun that only burns one ammo per shot, mm -hmm. um, and I got a stability mod and a thing that makes them explode I, I you're basically you're way you're out you outgun everything you fight the basically. game's too way too easy yeah. there is hardly any resistance in this game at all um the now the the thing that makes it stand out from other open world games one is that it cuts to the bone like it chops out a lot of the bs it's in open world mm -hmm. games like this is an old school like here's a map here's a bunch of the same activity 14 times on the map Here's seven different activities. Go do them all. Pretty much. Like, that's the game. There's, like, only... And you're right. There's, like, a few... Like, really only a few different, like, mission objectives. Like, there's one where you follow a breadcrumb trail to a destination, and that permanently increases your health bar. You go to these pods. You wipe out these alien nests. Um, and then there are some, like, animal herding missions, which were kind of... Mm. Actually, were really cool. Like, um, where you herd, pre you herd your, these creatures from one town to the next while these predators try to pick them off. Um, 
And I thought that was pretty cool. But in contrast to something like Dragon's Dogma 2, there are no emergent events in this game at all. Like, there's nothing that just happens organically out in the open world that catches you off guard. Like, mm-hmm. it is a throwback in a lot of different ways. But I also found that kind of refreshing. Like, it was nice to open up a map and not have, like, 8,000, like, icons there, like, waiting for me to go check them all mm-hmm. off. Like, it's a much more straightforward game than a lot of open world games that we're getting yeah. today. And pretty much everything you do, like, every place you go, like, there's something worthwhile on a chest to open. Mm-hmm. And, like, you, your the upgrade path is pretty steady. Yep. Um... You know, really feel like you're wasting your time. Mission um, structure is pretty obvious. They use like a flow yeah. chart type thing to show you like how you should be accomplishing the missions. It keeps yeah. you on track. But it, like, it also feels freeform enough that you're not being railroaded. Yeah, and like you can do a lot of things out of order. Yeah, and like your space. Basically, there's I think there's seven or eight villages, and like the main thing is you have to you have to liberate I think ten special types of ore from ten different ba- like large bases, mm-hmm. and then the other half of the main quest is you have to get these like basically approval stones from uh each of the villages and each village has a big interconnected quest chain that once you finish it they'll give you the thing and you bring it back to the main religious center and you plug it in and once you get enough of them you can do the final thing yeah um and the the quests in the villages are pretty elaborate they get and they're all interconnected a lot of times like you have to go to different villages and solve their quest to get this done and so you get that and tuck this guy who then help you like with this thing you need for the other villages quests and like they show, um, again, they, there's a flow chart type yeah. interface that you use to track your emissions. Yeah, which is confusing at first, but once you sort of see how it works, it's, yeah. like, it's a pretty elegant way it of is. tracking it's it It is. It's very all. clever. Yeah, but you're right. When I first looked at it, I was like, what the hell is that? Mm-hmm. And, but then as you start to play, you start to figure it out. My big complaint about this, Matt, is that the bad guys in this are humans, but you fight robots the entire damn mm-hmm. game. It's like, it gets old. Like, we've talked about fighting robots in games on Game Face so many times about how it's like the crappiest enemies you can ever fight in video games and that's pretty much all you fight no, in no, you fight monsters but, more than well, you fight robots well really. you fight well there's wildlife so yeah. there's like five or six different kinds of wildlife that you fight yeah there's the wolves there's the snakes in the river there's yeah. uh um exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's none of it's particularly memorable, memorable. right yeah um there's flying things mm-hmm. there's yeah there's, you can see like there's flying drones there's the drones whatever. there's like birds that swoop at you there's like these weird insect things spider things you have to like destroy nests of like corrupted versions of spider things mm-hmm. um it's it's fine like, what's it's, cool about this game is a traversal yeah so you have like um you eventually get like a triple jump you get a back you get a jet pack the jetpack you can glide with, and then you can go along the ground and kind of yeah. hover above the you ground. A, you get a quintuple jump. Yeah. Can you get a quintuple? You, you can get five uh, uh, backpack Five bars. jumps? You get five backpack bars. Wow. Give you five jumps. Or I didn't realize that. Or you can use them for other things. You can use them to hover. You can use them to, like, you know, there's yeah. a bunch of things you can do with a bag, with the jetpack energy. But yeah, you can get five of them, so you can you can theoretically jump five times. It feels great. The traversal, the jumping, the yeah, jetpack. That's the, real, that's the real issue with the first game, was like even the remake of it didn't really address it very well. That th- This is a vastly better game yeah. in terms of how the gameplay works. Because mm-hmm. I went back, before this came out, I went back to try to play the remake of the first game to sort of refresh my memory, and I couldn't. couldn't I do couldn't it. do it. It's yeah. too... The, the shooting is too weird. The shooting is all... It all feels very disconnected from everything. None of that's here. The, the shooting is solid. Everything feels very grounded and concrete and... You know exactly what you're doing when you're jumping on things or hopping over things or gliding. Like you're, the running in this even is like you don't really you can sprint for a while, but like the real way you traverse is you press the two shoulder buttons and he just sort of rocket Hovers. packs along the ground. Yeah. Like and he moves super fast. Yeah, and you can get an extra boost to that where you hold the trigger and he boosts like i mean you you gotta cross the map real fast with it yeah you can well plus also there's just like a billion fast travel points like again traversal is a it's the opposite of dragon's dog yeah really it's a strength of this game for sure being able to get around the open world very quickly but again it's not an emergent game where just random stuff it's not it doesn't the open world doesn't feel alive they're all the same place every time it's not there's no you know, once you finish an area there's nothing else to find there the enemies will respawn but there's no reason to do it again yeah 
And it has issues. Like, LOD is really bad in this. LOD is weird. Like, like, like po- textures flowers, just draw in on character models. And, like, flowers will pop in, like, mid-range, and then they'll vanish when you get closer yeah. to them. Like, I don't understand what's happening in a bunch of the... It looks pretty good, like, geometry. Like, like there's some nice vistas and big open areas and... Gets oh, it's really blown my mind sometimes with the There's visuals. There's a ton of yeah. really cool things where you're like, oh, wow, I can, I can get over there. And like, yeah. you, you, they're big, big places, big environments. It's a, it's a pr- very pretty. Um, they put a lot of work into the environment and kind of the the ecology of it and the the culture of the aliens and like all that. The problem is that you don't care about you it because it's just all so dry. It really it's, is. It's like every sci-fi I thing started fast forwarding through yeah. like the dialogue in this I so turn, fast. I turned the subtitles on <laughs> so I could jump through it and keep the podcast I was listening to on and just yeah. try to get through it. The only real bright spot is his dialogue is funny sometimes because he's so he said, just so had it with so yeah, there's, yeah. there's a there's a Geralt element to him For where sure. he's just like yeah just tell me what you need so I can get on with this yeah. and like anything. here's the thing though Matt this game is very very close to being awesome yeah it is to me this studio it's appeal just, it, studios it's good but it's like this shot this shy great uh, it's so close to me it's like this studio appeal studios is like the new spiders like mm-hmm. they are right, if yeah. you are looking because none a of this studio, is easy to do no like it's no. it's if like, it's very looking, impressive they got it as far as they did, frankly. If you're looking for an acquisition target right now, here's one. Yeah. This studio is right I'll go on the something great. You want someone to make you... I mean, you, you need different writers, probably. But you want someone to make you a pretty good Mass Effect game? Yeah. Like an action version of yeah. Mass Effect? Yeah. Or, like, Fable? Yeah. This studio, one to keep an eye on. Again, it comes from Appeal Studios. Would you recommend buying this, Matt? It is $70, although I've seen it on discount already some places. I imagine this will hit discount pretty fast. It already is in some um, places, yeah. I, I like it a lot. I really I, enjoyed it. I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed this game. I was like, what the hell? Like, It came out of nowhere. They sent me review code yeah. for it, and I was like, oh, it's kind of a slow I mean, week. Unlo- like, you get these modules you can use for different things. Like, You get a module that sent, you send a beacon, and call. you can call this worm yeah. out. And in the, the worms are anti-gravity, so they make all the enemies fly. Yeah, the yeah. only problem is that like you'll never be in a situation where you need to do that no it's never going to be hard enough that you're like i need the giant centipede anti-gravity worm you're gonna be like no i'm just gonna shoot you in the head three yeah times the lack of difficulty foils a lot of the ideas that they had for yeah. this, but that's something that's pretty easy to fix like the they have the fundamentals the principles of building open world games down like yeah. And I would not be surprised if eventually we we see something really really cool. Yeah, this is as good studio. as like an old old school Assassin's Creed most yeah. of the time. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, so anyway, that is Outcast: A New Beginning. It's available for PC, PS5, Xbox Series. Yeah. It is seventy dollars on console right now. You can find it cheaper on PC. What would you pay for this game, Matt? I'd pay like forty. Me too. Yep. It's also like I should I should know it runs really well on my machine. I don't know how I could see this being rough on a console until they patch it no it ran great that was all ps5 um b-roll because i know dragon's dog was having trouble i mean it runs great but again the lod is bad bad, like character models like textures will just start drawing in i I don't have any of that on the pc but but the lod is like i said weird like like the details pop in at mid-range but then they go away at close range and i don't understand what i've never seen that i've I've never seen that in my life that's really weird like if they're already on the screen you should be fine right but no they make the flowers like vanish when you get like five feet from them yeah so anyway there you go that's outcast a new beginning and next up it's time for <laughs> That's right people, it's time for Name That Game Tune where I play you five audio samples from a video game and you try to guess the name of the video game before Mr. Matt Kyle over here. Um, you won the last time, mm-hmm. which is pretty odd. Well, we want you guys to win, but it is nice that Matt wins every once in a while to keep you guys on your toes anyway. Um, so I do have five samples here from a game, and they are obtuse at first, and they become more obvious as we go. My goal is for you guys to get it on the fifth one. I don't know if that will ever happen, but that is my goal. Um, let me bring everything up here for Name That Game. Get your chat going. Get the sound effects ready to go. Um, a couple things before we get going, though. Um, you can only win once per calendar year. So if you've already won in 2024, do not play. Just sit back and enjoy it and watch everybody else have fun. Uh, you you must play PC games or at least have a, a friend who plays PC games because the winner of this wins a free PC game. Um, we want to make sure that that goes to a good home where it will be used. And then finally, 
while we're playing this, the chat goes into slow mode. You can see it there already, which means you can only put in one chat every 60 seconds. So do not spam the chat with a bunch of random game titles hoping that you're going to guess it right. You won't. We're just going to let you know right now. Uh, Matt, let me get your headphones turned up to a decent level so you can hear it. I think we're good there. Are you ready, Matt? Yeah, but you're going to want to scroll the chat current. Yeah. There we go. I think I did already. No, you didn't. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, here we go. Ultimate Villain, thank you for Twitch Prime. That's awesome. Good luck to everybody who's going to play Luke the Gamer, who stuck around. Good luck playing Name That Game for the first time. Matt, are you ready? Yeah. All right, is everybody else ready? Here's the first sample in three, two, one. Jet Force Gemini. Not Jet Force Gemini. Pretty good guess, though. Let's see if anyone else has any guesses. Or not. <laughs> Halo, no. Returnal, no. Splatoon, no. Earth Defense Force, no. Half-Life 2, no. Gears of War 2, no. High on Life, no. The Division, no. Those are all good guesses. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you that hint. Those are all good guesses. Turok 3, no. MDK, no. Mass Effect, no. Unreal, no. Splatoon, no. That's two Splatoon guesses, I think. Shadows of the Damned, no. Hmm. Star Wars Battlefront Remastered, LOL, no. Although I've been, t I've been trying to get that, Matt, to cover, and they will not give me review code of it. Oh, I got it. Did you? And I returned it. <laughs> they won't send it to me. It's awful. <laughs> Um, Ratchet and Clank, no. Dark Void, no. All right, are we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go for the second sample in three, two, one. StarCraft 2, no. Suicide Squad, no. Now, don't forget, people, that you do have to, like, if it is a franchise, you can't just say the franchise. You have to say the very specific game from that franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, Mass Effect Shotgun, no. <laughs> Perfect Dark, no. Arkham Knight, no. Smash Brothers Ultimate, no. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, no. Bionic Commando, no. Nier Automata, or Automata, no. I'm guessing that's Mass Effect 2, mm -hmm. ME2. Type out the game titles, folks. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn, no. Quake 3, no. Foam Stars, no. Wow. Lots of guesses. But none correct so far. Okay. Looks like we're ready for the third one. Here it comes. In three, two, one. Nothing? Nah, uh, it could be anything. See if you have any more guesses. Helldivers 2, no. Spider-Man, no. Resident Evil Revelations, no. Like, I kind of want to start guessing, like, Call of Duties, but I don't know which one it would be. <laughs> uh, Mass Effect 3, no. Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, no. Robocop, no. These are all great guesses, by the way. Destiny 2, no. Horizon Zero Dawn. Luke, I think someone guessed that one already. We already did that one. We did um, one Forbidden West. Yeah. Halo Infinite, no. Control, no. Something unraveling, I gather. Titanfall 2, no. Suicide Squad, Boomerang with Speed Force, no. Just Cause 3, no. We should have mentioned, by the way, that um, Outcast is very much like Just Cause. Yeah, there's some, there's some Just Cause to Got it. Got that vibe to it, yeah. Uh, Just Cause 3, no. Okay, I think we're going to the fourth sample, and I think this one will give it away. So listen very, very closely. In three, two, one. Apex Legends, no. Deep Rock Galactic, no. Oh, we have our winner, Mellow Pintor. Finally got it. It is Ratchet and Clank 
Rift Apart. Congratulations. Finally, somebody got it. Somebody guessed Ratchet and Clank earlier. That's mm -hmm. why I reminded people that you need to guess the right one. And here, this one definitely would have given it away. Here's the fifth one. You can hear all the nuts and bolts being gathered there. Sort of. The shing shing. I don't, I don't think I would have You wouldn't have got that. it? No. Okay. Congratulations, Mellow Pintor. Um, send us, or send me, a DM. You can do it here on Twitch. You can send it to me on Sifted at Shane. You can send it to us on Twitter at Sifted Games or me at Dinfire. Get at us any way you can. We'll get your free PC code out to you. Once again, congratulations. Here's another round of applause. And before we get going... Just want to remind people, if you want to support us, head to patreon.com slash sifted. That's S-I-F-T-D. You can pledge whatever you want there, a dollar a month, a billion dollars a month. But if you just spend $4 a month, you get all our content early. You get Pactor Factor a week early. Um, of course, you can also help us if you don't have any money with Twitch Prime, as a lot of people do during our uh, during our live streams. That will get you Pactor Factor a week early as well at twitch.tv slash sifted games. Um, and if you don't can't even do any of that, you can also help us, even if you don't spend any money or do Twitch Prime, you can review the show on the podcast service that you're listening to it to on right now. In fact, do it right now. If you're listening to the show on a podcast service, go review it right now. Stop. We're not going to say anything important. More important than that in the rest of this show, go review the show right now. It makes a huge, huge difference. I can already see our view counts or our, our, our plays on Spotify going up. Since you guys started reviewing the show, it matters a ton. If somebody searches for video games in Spotify or any podcast service and you guys have rated our show, it's more likely to bubble up in those results. It means a lot. Also, if you're just watching on YouTube, like the show, leave a comment, even if it's just like thanks or good show, like all that matters. Anytime you like something, you leave a comment, it helps us with the YouTube, YouTube algorithm and folks, for the first time in years, our YouTube subscriber count is going up. I can't believe it. It just sat still for years and it started going up. And I fully believe it's because all you guys are helping us with all this stuff. So anything you can do to help us, we appreciate all of it. It all makes a big difference to us. Um, I, I just really appreciate anything that you guys can do. But obviously, the best thing that you can do for us is to pledge at Patreon because that gives us money that we know is going to come in every month and we can count on it and we can actually do stuff with it like market and other things like that. So again, go to patreon.com slash sifted and help us there if you can. We'd really appreciate it. So we'll be back next week with Rise of the Ronin. Um, we'll have Ayudan Chronicle, 100 mm -hmm. Hero. Is it 100 Hero or 100 Heroes? 100 Heroes. 100 Heroes. Um, we'll have that in next week's show. We're going to have another great show for you guys. Again, thanks, everybody, for your patience while I was down with COVID. As you can see, back strong like bull. Can't keep me down. But I do appreciate you guys understanding why we couldn't do the show last week. There's no way in hell I'm coming in here when I have COVID and uh, with Maddie here. So thanks for everything, guys. Much love. We'll see you next Tuesday. Game Face is up and out. <laughs>